Hey guys, welcome to the close. Two hours left on Thursday. What a day it's been. Again, uh, a little bit less action than the past couple of days, but that doesn't mean there wasn't a ton of opportunities. Again, today we're going to get into a few of those as we make our way through to the close here this afternoon. Uh, let's first off uh, get a check of where we're at right now. Here's a look at uh, North American markets for you. 0.9 for the S&P to the downside still 0.7 there uh, for the Dow. It's a NASDAQ leading uh, off the lows, though, so that's the good news. 1.5 now for uh, the NASDAQ TSX back in the red. We did go positive at one point here in Toronto. Uh, crude oil, yeah, back to the downside. We are up as much as 5% at one point. Now down 1.6 for uh, crude as we have about 30 minutes left in the trading session for oil, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Uh, pretty ugly day once again for uh, cryptocurrencies. Here we go. That's the board at this point, 2 p.m. again. Uh, Eastern uh, tech stocks leading to the downside, specifically the semiconductors, AMD, 6.5%, Micron about the same. Uh, they're all getting hit here, even AMAT, Qualcomm coming up, as you heard Trader Pratt talking about their aftermarket tonight. Uh, NVIDIA as well, uh, or it was Oracle, not Qualcomm, my, my mistake. Uh, we're also dealing with uh, software and uh, hardware makers to the downside. Banks under pressure. We have retail names under pressure outside of uh, Amazon on the split news. If you missed it, not sure where you've been, but uh, 20 for one in June for Amazon on the split. That's the energy group. We saw uh, crude oil negative. Well, look at all these. Halliburton, BKR, EOG, XOM, to name a few, all holding up pretty nicely. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the uh, fertilizer group, if you want to call it that. Uh, apparently, there's a group because they're getting a bounce today on that Russian news. If you missed it, uh, Russia going to uh, stop exporting fertilizer and fertilizer components altogether. It's tough to see, but that's Apple, uh, the really uh, skinny one there. 3.5% for Apple. CrowdStrike reported. Amazon we talked about. That is the way things are shaping up here. Uh, again, as we head towards the close, guys, welcome. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, on a Thursday afternoon, we got uh, CPI this morning. If you missed it again, in line with expectations, the market kind of shrugged that off and uh, back to the downside we go. Let's jump into what we were discussing in the pre-market this morning. Uh, join us every day, guys, at the 8.30. We'll take you right through to the open, get you prepared for the open, make sure you have a plan for the open. Neil's going to uh, lead the way here and talk about one of his trades from this morning. Thank you very much, Brendan. Let's talk about a plan for the open and what happens when it goes a little bit sideways, and, uh, but actually in the direction that you wanted. Rivian reporting earnings after market tonight. It was we're shooting this. And of course, uh, they've been under pressure the last couple of days. It's been about shorting Lucid for me. Uh, today, Rivian was going to be on the radar. As always, want to start with what was the plan initially? Because look, downward trend is obvious. And actually, the clean move from about $60. And then you can go back to this double bottom on our daily chart, $40 even. The last wick bottom, of course, uh, going to be coming into play here. And then we're just looking at this bounce initially off that 40 right into 45. You come in, have a lower high in the afternoon at that same 45 level. It also ends up being the pre-market top. So you can kind of see where we're going here. Now, the old pop and fade type of idea Fade Rivian, there's a couple of negative catalysts that you have to consider. One, Lucid already did pretty bad. The EV space is under pressure. Your nickel price is going crazy, which is putting pressure on all of the EV makers. So all of these things lead to want to have that short, and 45 is the first level. Fast forward to the five minute to, to the one minute chart here, and you're consolidating in front of 45. Now this pop, a lot of times when this happens at 9:30, it's the go-to, it's the go-to setup. Like you get a 9:30 pop, it's the pop and fade but it drops and just starts falling before the market opens up. Now, when you're looking to make a trade uh, off that open, when volume comes in there, a lot of times this can happen and it just gets going. So the question I ask myself is, you know, what do you do when it's already dropped out and you sort of miss that initial trade? You gotta go back to the drawing board, ass assess it. At this particular point, I, I was able to get into a lucid short, so I, was exp I did have exposure and was able to make a winner somewhere, but what to do with Rivian? And then fast forward to go back and zoom out on your daily, or you could have just pulled up a 15 or even a 60 minute chart, and you would have seen a decent little double bottom uh, the day before. There's a little bit of chop through it, but as long as you're willing to look at the, the yesterday's uh, action, the day before action, at that same open, you would see that 43 hold up. Not a great level when you look at that time frame, but you're looking for a place where you can enter, and it just so happens that that first consolidation uh, 
occurs at 43. So now you have two reasons to like that 43 price. Fortunately enough, Rivian's going to come back in and give a test at that level at this time. But the only thing I did wrong was not going back to the well for the original target at 40 even. So we're going to get in. Reason to get in, let it fail off that price, and you get the rollover style trade. Let myself get shaken out by the futures. And from there, the only thing to think about is 40. As a day trader, a lot of times you look at a level like that. It's a hard double bottom. The first time it tests, first, not second. First time it tests, I'm almost always going to want a trade off of that kind of a low. Size at the bottom, buyers coming in, shorts covering. It's not that it works every single time, but sometimes it's about risk to award with a trade like this. You're often able to get something along the lines of a 05, a 10, sometimes even a 1 or 02 to the long side, and then you're just looking to play the bounce right back into the original range. So there is no holding on, oh yeah, Rivian's made a bottom, it's going to go back up to 43. No, no, none of that nonsense. It's 40, trying to get it back to that 40, 50 area. Sometimes you'll get a pop maybe to 41, you can hold on to a few extra shares. Uh, but it's about understanding that once your original plan and what you really wanted to have happen does not, and that's that short off of 45, what can you do next? All you can do is evaluate where the stock is, can you make a trade from that point on, and then execute that trade. You're not going to get 45 at that point. It's not going to happen for you. So you can only really play, trade off that 43. It was there, and then we get that 40 trade as well. Sometimes you've got to be able to go back to the drawing board. When in doubt, zoom out. Don't get frustrated. Make a new plan. Yeah, and love the uh, concept of uh, having a plan as well. That's what we do every day, guys. Uh, come up with a plan in the pre-market. Get ready for the open, as we said. Uh, and all of the information you need is going to be on that uh, watch list and that link. Miss V is going to join me here in a few minutes. She'll have that link for you uh, in the chat if you ask her really nicely. Uh, what a, we're going to get back to Rivian here, obviously, throughout the afternoon. Again, earnings aftermarket tonight, obviously going to be all about what the uh, comments are in the report uh, when it comes to production, where they're at, uh, how things have gone so far. Uh, I wanted to mention CrowdStrike here to start things off because uh, it was top of the list this morning on the watch list. Uh, good report for CRWD. Cybersecurity has been uh, a popular topic over the past couple of weeks and continues to be. So uh, they're, they're, uh, both top and bottom lines were good. And the forecast, guys, uh, looking pretty good for CrowdStrike. So it gave you a nice trade today. Yo, what's up? Yeah, welcome to the closing show here. Uh, Sean, Neil, should be a good one, um, you know, into this, uh, what's going to be an exciting weekend for sure. And uh, we've talked about this market rally a little bit uh, happening there on Prad Show. I don't, we don't know really what's happening here, uh, but it is a nice move to the north side. Um, and yeah, we only took CrowdStrike once. And, and the real miss for me was right down here. We were looking at it. Unfortunately, I wasn't looking at it enough. And I mean, it made that move down. And the thing about earnings, and you're going to see Asana as well, goes to the upside and then I believe faded back down. I have to look at that before I say it. But like Crowd had a monster earnings report. It was on our sticky note to look at it and we couldn't really find any levels. But this is the kind of trade that I'm talking about every day. And that is, is that, you know, wait for the open to happen, right? Don't get caught in something early. Uh, I wonder if I have any examples of that today uh, for me. Right, right, right now, by the way, we're $4 in the money. Uh, is my mic on? Yeah, on, on Microsoft, which is going to be a good trade. Uh, but nothing really happening here off the open on CrowdStrike. It comes down and then it kind of makes this base I mean, this is a one minute chart. You have about seven or eight minutes here. And I think that you could have gone long on this break to the upside. But to me, it's more about making that base down here at 183. And, th and this is the problem. Like if you take a 188 long, once you break back above VWAP and the 50 period and things like that, like if you give it back down here, that's $5 worth. Now it turns out that it would have given you a 10. So the two to one was great. But unfortunately, we did miss that. The only trade that I did take, it looks a little bit better when you look like this, is that break of the 195 top. So as soon as we take that out, of course, we punch the long through. Our best out is 196.60. And as you can see here, um, in and out there, I thought we made a mistake. So we got out of 20, 25%. Then it was 25, 25, 25. Some nice outs. And then we just smelt. I mean, this is the thing, right? Um, we smelt that there was a problem here because it went to 198, stopped. The market was actually doing nothing. This was barcoding, and we just said, look, instead of waiting for this move to happen, we decided to get out at the top here because that's 196.50. The most we gave up was 198. 
So we gave about a buck fifty to make sure we're out of this. And then for some reason, it just crashed down here. And now CrowdStrike this afternoon doesn't really know what it wants to do. For me, I think it's a long here, but you guys saw me trade Bumble yesterday, and it was almost the very same setup where we had a nice move up for Bumble. I just, like Bumble to me, I, you know, it's not the same as CrowdStrike. I actually believe in CrowdStrike and think that it's uh, the nice space there. But uh, like I said, I, I don't know. Bumble seems like it's a good, good company, but um, it was already up 50%, 43% or something. Um, but right here, CrowdStrike, I'm wondering about this 190. That's probably a decent level. If the futures do crash here, though, look out below. Because the reason, Neil, is obvious. The market is ripping here. Yeah. And what is CrowdStrike doing? CrowdStrike is doing absolutely nothing. So that's kind of the relationship you're looking for. A bump up in the market, a resist here for CrowdStrike. So be very, very careful with that. Pause possibly a short year through 190. Yeah, I mean, I took two very tight stop shorts on CrowdStrike, so there's not much to say trading-wise. The only thing that's weird that I'll point out is there was this wick top, and I'm just looking at these 182s on Crowd, and I'm like, I remember this morning, I was like, why did I write down 182? Now I look back at this, because it was trading well up in, like, the 190s. But here is this 182 level on the 15-minute chart. Hard top, two days in a row, runs away from that price range. And sometimes in a liquidity vacuum, and we've said, I know we've said this before, in a liquidity vacuum, and this was one to the downside in the morning, it'll snap right back up there. Uh, and then, but the only thing you've got is where that bid was before. So it, it goes to that 182 and it bounces back. I did have two really good curl trades on. like they, And this one here, I didn't take profit, should have, didn't, and then got stopped out. And this one, we did follow rules, wait for the curl, takes him out for a buck, and you stop out for 50 cents on the rest to make sure that you're going you're gonna to have a winner. So that would have worked. And then 200 did come into play, but not quite. It was like a 199. Um, I would have liked to have the entry in the $200 range, but I was willing to wait for it because it was a good report. So once it had made the move uh, off the bottom, we didn't catch the bottom. I was really just thinking about where is it fadeable. Tried a couple of scalps. One of them should have been better than the other. Uh, and then, of course, if 200 had come in, I think we'd be okay. I'm surprised it's not doing anything. But, I mean, if the market pulls back here, I mean, we just got to the 930 high in the ES, that 190 shelf looks pretty interesting uh, on CrowdStrike. It's, it's interesting that it wouldn't have bounced off that level, given the move that we just had up. But it is up 12%. All right, let's continue along, guys. We were mentioning uh, Asana uh, bad, <laughs> as they put on the board there. But, uh, yeah, as uh, Sean was mentioning, not really much to do with Asana. Uh, we had crowd kind of test higher or test lower and then moves higher. It was the opposite for ASAN. Uh, but, yeah, not a good report for uh, Asana here. Uh, not, not an easy trade, but uh, might have caught a bit of a move out off the open. Yeah, remember what we said? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's moving a lot right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so remember what we said early about, you know, watch out for trading earnings and, like, trying to be, like, influenced by what you might be thinking uh, the report had in it? I mean, it was down pretty huge, uh, Asana, today. I mean, we can zoom back out and you can see the dip uh, down from yesterday. Do 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 Like, that was 50 bucks uh, not too long ago. And then you come into yesterday and then today. Uh, just an absolute disaster for Asana, down to 37 today. Um, but, okay, so $50 yesterday, 37 today. And then if you zoom into the open, so you're like, oh, maybe this is a short. Maybe it was, but it held pretty good. We talked about the short interest on this name uh, as well and this is why it's very difficult this is the open right here 930 you can see by the volume at the bottom I mean look at this it just took off to the upside and I know Neil was short in the pre-market but that's why you can't hold these things because you have no idea what's about to come especially when it is that earnings season it touches up here to 39 which is a surprise and I think that one touch two touch three touch should have been short right there and again that's at 1018 like oh man gotta do gotta do a good job or better job maybe uh, of watching out for these earnings plays because it touched right there again and then made the move back down. So we know that there is some support, or sorry, resistance on the upside here at 39. Should have been looked at, wasn't, bang, right down to the downside. And then look again here. It's really respecting these levels. Like, it came back and touched 35, that pre-market bottom again. And now it's kind of just barcoding, as you can see here, all afternoon before taking out some levels again. Upside stops at 38. Now you're bouncing around, bouncing, dancing, dancing around, bounce. See, that's, that, that, that's what happens if your stock's not... Bouncing, bouncing or dancing. It's, it's bouncing. bouncing. It's bouncing around key levels trademark. right now. Um, yeah, trademark, yeah. Um, it's too late now. But, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's bounced. That, that stock is bouncing around the 50 period right now. But uh, I'm, saying Asana, that the I'm saying that the rest of the day. You know that, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I, I, like, I like it. You do? It's bouncing. The stock is bouncing. It's bouncing. 
Well, I'll make it. I'll make it a thing. I don't care. Yeah. Okay. But cool. you know, here's the thing. You you just mentioned the time, and you're like, don't even think about beating yourself up for at 10:18, not looking at the Asana short. Because I'll, I'm going to go over why I got out of Asana and how we managed to dodge what would have been an ugly bullet today. Uh, but at, at 10:18 was exactly when Rivian retested. $43. Right. That's, so if Rivian was the first thing you're looking at, the chance to get Rivian at 43 was at 1018 this morning. It was 1015 to 1018. So that's the same time if you were trying to catch Asana. Now here's Asana. If you're watching the morning show, I was sitting in this at about 830, actually right after we came on. Consolidating at 36. Oh, look at it off of this high of the day. Able to take some out when it broke 36 even. And then it starts flushing going to 915. I'm purposefully not showing you the rest of the uh, rest of the day just yet. Looked like it was about to break 35. We'll get the flush we're looking for. Go further down. But I said the whole way, if you get back in or if you don't get back in, have a hard stop. If it breaks the high, I'm just going to be out. So I do reload in front of 37, and then I just stop out. And you're not going to see an execution after this. And I've been, I've done the other thing before on these, on these where you get really stubborn. Um, you say, I really love the short. Maybe it does this curl. It's like, oh, I got wicked out and then I'm back in here, or I'm back in here, and then it's going to the high. No, you just can't, you can't do it. Like, the only time to make that trade is trying to catch it, maybe at 940, I think more realistically, uh, at 950 on a lower high, or like we said, at 1018. But as I was mentioning before, or just a second ago to Sean, like if you, if Rivian was the first thing you were looking at, well, this is what, this is what was happening around that time. You were watching Rivian come up, and you were trying to get that trade if that was the first thing you were looking at. And this is the opportunity cost of trading multiple names and multiple setups, is what do you do when two things happen at once? You know, maybe I won't, like, I won't even, that actually happened to me today um, when I took uh, AM, an AMD trade and then missed, and it'll be my frustrating trade, I'm not gonna show it yet, but uh, a Chevron, which was exactly the setup I'd been watching for 10, 15 minutes, and AMD comes to a price, not as high up on the scale for me, and I still put the AMD trade on, and then as it's happening, miss out on, on, uh, on Chevron. Now, this is going to be, you know, like I said, it's always par for the course when you're trading multiple names, but you've got to be able to prioritize. That's first things first, and if the first thing on your list was Rivian, then at that time, as good as Asana was, you're going to be on Rivian. All right, let's keep going. Uh, a few things of note here. Agi Eagle, UAVS, the drone maker, just popping up on a volume spike, guys. eBay. All the way back down after that uh, investor day bump uh, that happened uh, midday. So back to the downside. Uh, let's move on to the uh, fertilizer rally that happened today. Uh, this was the headline that came out uh, first thing this morning. It was about 10 o'clock, I guess. Uh, yeah, Russia temporarily suspending fertilizer exports completely. So Mosaic, uh, all of the fertilizer makers and component makers jumped up on that news, including this one. Uh, there was separate news for AgriForce uh, as well. They signed a letter of intent to buy uh, another plant uh, for 40 million, I believe it was. Uh, they do more than just uh, some components for fertilizer, but they do have a fertilizer portion of their business as well. So AGRI, crazy, uh, but any of these names, guys, uh, pretty strong today. <coughs> just dying over here. Go. It's, that's why you got the, got the water. Next, you know, it happens. I have 61 executions, not really trades, but executions on, on Agri. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 separate short trades for me on Agri. But here's the thing. I, I had a long sort of winded rant on uh, the midday show when I came on. Um, I forget exactly what time. I think it was right around here or some point. I think, yeah, something along these lines. It was right around like 1 or 1230, something along those lines. But every single out, is tight and when, when something's going like this and I sort of learned my lesson with DWAC when I was so short it was going to come down that one day that I just I, I might have had like 30 like 27 separate short positions on it but there were a, like two or three in there where I just said nah forget it this is it and I let it run right past the consolidation area that I was trading in and I let it run you over and that's the difference between being up and down in the stock I basically needed to have a big capitulation to get green it eventually did but that's if you're relying on that, hitting the home run, that's not the way to go, I think, counter trend. So I played off three, tight, tight stop. Every single time, I'm not really letting it go too far. Five cents, 10 cents, something along those lines. Even making top wick a couple of times here, where it's like, oh, top wick, and then it flushes, I was able to get back in. But something interesting happened, and that's what I want to talk about. When it gets to $5, it goes one time to 02, this time stopping out to 03, 
And then you see this capitulation candle. It goes five down to 440. So it gives a 10% retracement. So anybody that made a short trade there, it did it twice, five into five, uh, 440. At that point, it should turn you green. If, you, if it did it and you're shorting, then you're being too aggressive. But then from 475, there was one buyer in one shot that took it up to the 515 high. And it immediately, and when I say immediately, before anybody could rationally act, it was back down at 480 instantly and then there was more selling in that range holding it at that price so the biggest capitulation candle from that point on that 475 area was the stop and somebody even took like a hundred and something thousand shares uh right around here when i got back into it at 475 i got i got the heck out of dodge at four dollars because to me when it breaks out from these prices and it's super strong that's your retracement level you know, it, because of how weak it was and when it did that capitulation candle here, that's why I let it go past 450 that second time. But you can see what happened. Like it goes to $4 and it's still churning higher. But guess what level it hasn't been able to get past still? It's that 475 area. So somebody very clearly is still dumping shares through that price. The fact it's still up here is super, super bullish. Uh, but if it doesn't clear 75s, I think there's another uh, capitulation in it. For whatever reason, it never seems to get to that halt point, despite there being some 10% candles that I've seen. Um, but either way, uh, I do think that 75 is going to be the, the big level here. Not even the $5. It's really just 75 80 uh, that seller or whoever is selling uh, shares at that price really has a stranglehold on the stock. Uh, we'll, we'll go over, what, what are we talking about Rivian uh, later on, but uh, we just, just new position alert right here uh, for Rivian, Rivian, we did average in, so um, our normal price was up here at 43, waiting, and, and we, we had this, we, we were watching it down near 40, Neil talked about it as his trade of the day, I still think we can revisit back down here, but we are putting on more shares right now, so if you do see the average price, and we talked about this earlier, changing uh, on us, the average price, that's why, so uh, you're going to see to the downside right now, Rivian, I still think this is a cool trade. Um, if we break back down below this 40.85, uh, then you know we'll retest back here. So, I, I mean, I'm not stopping on this. My bid is down here at 40.30, so I still think we break. But now that I look at this, maybe we should put the bid like right here, 40.60, 40.70, uh, something like that for Rivian. But uh, yeah, I haven't done anything in the ag space. Uh, the name that I was looking at was Mosaic when that first came out. It did rip to 62, I believe. Yeah, right here. Uh, actually, it was right in here before falling back down. And the right when we left the show, we were talking about th this level down here at 59. It looks like it's a legit one, as is 62. So Mosaic, definitely worth a little scalp action in here. Uh, this might be a decent short, 62 right here, into that 62.20. But again, I don't know. I I'd rather be long. So you maybe you got to wait for down here 60.80 if you're looking for something on Mosaic. Up 6.8%, a decent look here for... Um, this fertilizer name or ag name, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I'd rather look long. So if it comes back in, watch out for a 61 bid there on Mosaic. Well, back to day lows now down 2.5% for crude as we head towards the uh, close of trading for uh, crude before the electronic session at 2.30. Uh, so heads up if you're trading any of the oil, uh, oil names today. Tesla uh, with a price hike uh, confirmation today, and I guess it was day one, comes all the way down to 805, 810. Holds nicely, guys, and gives you a nice bounce here, but uh, pretty negative overall uh, today for uh, Tesla on that. So I think you got to put the Tesla move in some context because Neil's down, what, 14% and Rivian's got crushed and Lucid's down. Like, it's just, it's, it's been a risk-off type of day, and a lot of the, a lot of the higher-flying, higher-valuation names have gotten beaten up well more, uh, down more than the NASDAQ. And there was a lot conspiring, like we mentioned, there's a lot conspiring against the EV names with what's going on in nickel uh, in general. So, you know, Tesla was probably never going to go up in that circumstance. I will, I did say in the morning that, you know, I, I felt that if there was going to be a pop, it would be more like the 60 level, uh, 55 to 60 area. That would be the resistance. And it just never got there. That's the one thing that happened this morning is, you know, I was looking for, I ended up getting short Lucid, but I was looking for Lucid a, a higher and we were looking for Rivian higher to short and I was looking for Tesla higher to short and then there was a move up and then none of them really got anywhere and then just absolutely faded. It didn't get to 800 unfortunately. I think that would have been a good opportunity uh, to catch some catch some bids. I mean, I, I, Apple was at a level that's why I got it at 56 is a good level for Apple. Had Tesla been at 800 I probably would have taken a shot at it. I tried Micron for a small win um, but I think 800 is what you got to watch out here for Tesla. It's not about whether you like Tesla 
uh, or whether you think they're going to succeed. This is more just risk off. EV space getting beaten up here. And you can see it's had a very nice bounce back uh, into 825. But you know, I kind of feel 800 is your level to defend. Uh, it feels inevitable that we're going to be getting there. Rivian earnings tonight. I don't think it affects Tesla that much, but for the overall EV space, it can be a bit of a barometer if it's really bad. Uh, I can imagine if they're struggling to meet production. Relatively, that's, I feel that's relatively good for Tesla because of Great. Tesla, Tesla can produce, but it hasn't always played out that way. Like, it should mean to me, when Lucid and Rivian are in trouble, that Tesla should be stronger. Right. But the, that's not always worked out for price action. It's true in the real world, but it hasn't really meant that for price action you because of the valuation, I think. I was gonna, you know, I was going to say maybe it's reasons. Sure. Like if they talk about nickel shortage or lithium or something like that, then that could uh, pass over to uh, Tesla. But, um, yeah, so I'll just talk about Tesla in a second. Microsoft right now, yeah, buddy, we're $4 and change uh, in the money on that one. So here's the boat. Uh, wow, it actually takes away the whole screen there. Okay, I didn't. That's Neil's boat. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that, Neil. Hope you can swim. Uh, okay, there. You know I can't. Uh, well, I can't. I know not, that's not, not very well. Yeah, yeah I don't think you'd be surviving that ocean right there. Uh, but um, okay, so 286. Just to let you know, um, Microsoft is starting to go back up to the upside. We're four dollars in the money. Obviously, it's crazy. Uh, we took it out here for like 50, 60, 70 cent wins. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then it just started to go, man. The market started to go. So now we're four dollars and 30 cents in the money uh, on softy, and I still think it takes out the high. We've already past this little high right there and I just want to tell people if you're in the same trade as me um, good but uh, I don't know where we're going so we've already held this pretty good nope. and I'm just looking at these 285 tops you know if we come back in and retest that that's also where the 50 period is so you may want to get jiggy with it if you know what I'm saying uh, if you don't neither do I so that's good um, all right uh, the next thing was Tesla TSLA I just want to show you right now, and you guys already know this because if you're trading Tesla, then you know the kind of chop that it's in. Uh, if the daily chart ever loads here, um, this is what the, I, I don't care. I just need this much. This is what the daily looks like. It's like super, super choppy, um, you know, back and forth every day, depending on what this market wants to do. So to me, you stay out of this. Like it's, it's not worth saying go long if we take 900 or go short if we break 760. I feel like we're just we're in this range and it's just going to do what it's going to do. So. I don't know. I, I know. I don't think it's at any investable levels right now uh, be, just because of the bounce. So for me, I, I, I think you just wait until, like, if you want to buy, you buy the bottoms. And if you want to sell, then you sell, like, a 950-ish. So I would say buy 750, sell 950. Other than that, you're just chilling out in the middle, and I wouldn't do anything unless you have strong conviction one way or the other on Tesla. Uh, we saw the uh, bad report from JD.com. Uh, CNBC just talking about the... SEC guys requesting some data from uh, Chinese companies. So, uh, I mean, JD is earnings related, obviously. Baba here down uh, 8% on the day, obviously going to be dragged down with that report, but a heads up on uh, Chinese stocks this afternoon uh, as well. Uh, Rivian, uh, we've discussed in depth here, uh, earnings tonight. Uh, I guess the only important thing is what could they possibly say that would be positive? What could they possibly say? Possible, right? Okay. Um, yeah. So, oh, I was on Sofi here. Oops. Um, I don't know. I don't look. I don't know what Rivian's going to say. To be honest with you, um, are they adding prices? Are they taking prices away? Um, I, you know, I, I look for the same thing that I think all of us look for, and that is like, you know, what kind of reservations do they have? Um, you know, are they on track to meet their targets? And I don't even know what they are. So we'll just hear, you know, if it's a 2023 kind of mass production, what kind of numbers they're expecting to roll out? How many cars did they deliver as a, or trucks? I guess. As as they opposed to are supposed to deliver so I think that's what you're looking for in Rivian I mean we were shorting all day not all day we hit the one short and just holding it all day I uh, was short again and look I don't um, I, I'm just trading price action here Rivian one two three four five six I mean, there's a little green day there. Let's just pretend that's not. Seven, eight. It's like eight straight red days here. I mean, and you may have a little green day right there. This is the best days where it's birthday. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth day of its existence. It went up to 180. How does that feel right now? 180 long? Like, I'm sure nobody went long there, and it's just people getting blown out of their shorts. But, like, all the way down here, even if you felt comfortable in the 110 area because you had some support, if you didn't pull the trigger to get out here, then, I, I mean, it's all the way to the downside. And even if, you know, you're kind of playing technicals and you're caught long right here in Rivian, I mean, where, where is it, 60 or 70? Do you really get out at 50? 
I, I don't know. I just feel like Rivian's trapped a lot of traders. Here we go. Market going up. And it's a $5 winner for Softy. But um, anyways, I just think that Rivian, we got to wait for earnings. I'm not expecting anything good. On that note, it is starting to go back up to the upside. I want it to come up here to 43 so we can put on a much bigger position. But for right now, we'll see what Rivian's doing. It's clearly following the market, which the market looks like it wants to go back uh, to Greensville here. So I don't know if that's going to happen. But for me, it's Rivian's a short until they prove us wrong. And that's going to happen tonight, right? So that's huh? that. No, but I mean, they're going to prove their numbers tonight. It, okay. it, and either we switch, either I switch up the game yeah. and I go long tomorrow or, you know, remember, Neil and I, and, and again, I know you're watching this uh, and you should know, but we're flat at the end of every day. So we're not holding into earnings. I'm not swinging any sort of a trade here. And that's what I meant by tomorrow. We'll just see what's good. I'm with you. If it gets to 43, I think... I I got to short it at 43 again. We just talked about that level. Like, it's coming up with the market. Market's at resistance. I'm not sure it gets there, but if it does, that's got to be a fade. It's it, like it's in the bucket of what a firm has been for a while. It's just like it's a short till it's not. And you know what? Maybe on earnings, $40, maybe that's the point. And maybe this is the turnaround. But until you actually see this, it might even have to break 47 or 50 until you really convince me um, that you've gotten through a couple of ceilings there and it can be a trend reversal. But uh, yeah, if he gets to 43 today, I think it's pretty safe to say it's going to be a bit of a short. I just want to quickly pivot, not to change the subject, but we are talking about the market moving up here. This is the ES, so I just wanted to show, uh, sorry, the NQ, ES, yeah, same thing. It's basically the same thing. 930's top uh, is being now tested for a second time. That's a 15 minute chart uh, up there, but being tested for a second time. So anything that's not near its high, or at least near the morning highs, is relatively weak, uh, like Arivian. Uh, I'm in Apple. I was about to, I was going to trail it, uh, but it's about to my 159 target. I'm kind of wondering if that's even a good enough target at this point. I really just had it in because that was uh, the morning resistance level. But 160 is actually where this was at 930. If the ES can take that top out, why shouldn't Apple be able to do it? So if we get to this price and we're, and we're breaking out of the highs, I'll probably cancel my order and put a trailing stop in instead. But I need to see the NASDAQ, or at least the yes, or one of the two, or if not both, uh, breaking that 930 high uh, to feel confident about canceling this order. All right. Uh, just watching a few other things bouncing here. Uh, CrowdStrike, one of those, trying to bounce off pre-market uh, lows and support. Uh, let's uh, continue along with uh, frustrations. I think coming off of you know, the wildness that we've seen over the past couple of days, a lot of people were expecting today to be similar. The open was kind of quiet, though, overall. You really had to pick and choose your spots here, guys. It's uh, easy, I guess, to get frustrated today. Yeah, it, it was. But yesterday, so I... I wanna, I'm, I'm going to do CrowdStrike again, so you go ahead. Okay, with, good. With I'm going to do, I'm gonna do Chevron, I mean, which is be weird because I had a winning trade in Chevron, but this is just... Yesterday, it was a mess trading oil names, right? Like, if you were... Oil went down, and you're trying to short these things, and they just, they just weren't working. So I went back to the well which was looking at the overall oil futures and then playing uh, breakout retracements, so either shorting at a top when if oil's at a key level. And I was just able to line one up here on Chevron. Uh, let me get the oil futures chart so I can actually better demonstrate this because as it was coming down, uh, down towards VWAP off a 174 high, you essentially had... You essentially had this level approaching, this double bottom at 107 on a five minute. So the, is the previous day's low, uh, and then the overnight sort of morning low was coming into play, and it bounces off this level. And as it's bouncing off the level, you're able to get this bounce in Chevron. So quick little trade there. And then from that, I said, I want to be shorting 175 in the same vein. Like that, it did it at 50, 55, 60, whenever it would line up at a key price level. And then you just look at the, the high on that retracement the previous day was about 111. It got to that 111 and started pulling back. It did it twice, and there was a chance to trade off 175. So the real answer is, well, how could you possibly miss out on a trade um, that occurred just after I was in the law. I was clearly looking at the stock. I had it up. I just made the long trade and had gotten out early because I was looking for a short. And the answer to this is I was too busy losing on AMD. Okay, it, 
at that moment, I'm sitting there looking for the AMD long and trying to find it. It got to a level I liked, and it's fine. Like, it didn't, I didn't hold it past a level or average in, and it wasn't terrible in terms of the structure of a trade, but it was still jumping to something else that might not have been at the top of the radar like trading uh, Chevron had been. Every day this week, when it's given this setup, it's been pretty good, and it got to just close to 175, exactly where the turn I wanted was, and I just happened to be looking at another stock. So that, that was a huge mistake. Uh, sometimes, in the, in the more volatile the market is, um, you can love certain setups, but, and I do jump from stock to stock because I'm looking for specific setups. I might see the same setup I love on three different names. To me, that's basically making the same trade three times, even if it's three different names. In this case, this setup has been better than catching bottoms on tech names in the morning, for me. So I should have been doing this because it worked five times in a row this week, as opposed to jumping over to AMD and something which is, you know, reasonably speaking, it's been good overall probably in the last year, but it's, it hasn't been like the breadwinner trying to find bottoms in AMD at that time. Um, it definitely should have been uh, back to Chevron uh, in this case and uh, bungled it by going over to AMD. Cheers to Larry Wanta with his Schlitz beer there. So we'll go cheers on that one. Um, we, I mean, I could use SoFi. I know Schlitz. Eh? Uh, we could use SoFi here as 925 uh, bottom. I kept trying to get long here at 925. It came back down here two or three times. Wasn't able to get it. Now SoFi exploding to the upside. Good trade today for SoFi. We waited and were patient. Got these 925s. Hit it, hit it. Uh, SoFi, a top stock for me today. Although you, you wouldn't be able to tell. Be, well, you would be, hopefully, uh, because these are all profit center spots right here. So. So far, nice, you know, good trade for me today. Here comes Rivian back to the downside. But I'm going to use CrowdStrike. And the reason why, and I've sort of already talked about it, and not only that, we were just talking about it barcoding and breaking. And then Brent, me and Neil looked at each other when Brendan said it retested some of the lows. This was that short that I was talking about. And I was like, I want to look long instead of short on this name. Look, it broke this range just right now. Like right when we were on doing this, it broke it. And then it went, so that was, it broke one, the 190 bottom there, and then just went right down to 187.50. So I feel like just bad executions today. Look, it, CrowdStrike is not my number one stock. Of course not. I have Softy $5 in the money here. Um, but, uh, and Rivian as well, by the way, which, which is Rivian starting to move uh, back down here with hopefully with the futures. But I, I already talked about it. And it was looking at stocks that make, um, you know, have earnings. We already picked our way. We want to go long because it was an up day uh, on the market. Well, not on the market, sorry, on their market, on CrowdStrike. It was a great morning for them. They came in, kind of barcoded all pre-market, didn't do a whole hell of a lot. It did touch 196 here, and then it was this, making that bottom. And it's not, I'm not mad about getting long, not getting long there. It's just when we had the directional change, which to me is breaking this view up at 187.50, to me that should have been the long right there. It was on the sticky note, so therefore I was watching it. So I, I, there's not much to say. I mean, Neil mentioned it already. This is when Rivian was doing its dance, so I'm still happy. I mean, we got a $3 winner on Rivian, and then we eventually took it and were able to make a buck sixty uh, on this trade eventually. So it was fine, but I feel like that missed opportunity right there. That's why on here, on the sticky note, I have today, I ha have talked about CPI, that's fine. We have Microsoft on here. I'm holding a $5 winner, so that's good. I have Rivian on here. We're $3 winner. Then we have Asana, which we didn't really look at, and then CrowdStrike, which we have a big winner on as well. So the sticky note today is cash money. The problem is I didn't make enough off of it. So that's always the case. But hey, CrowdStrike is my frustrating stock of the day. Uh, I wanted to throw out eBay quickly, guys, before we uh, move on here. The move back down happened, uh, what time was that? Uh, right when we came on, really. Uh, we came all the way back down, as I was mentioning, to 51. Uh, this was delayed, uh, but it looks like they've updated some, uh, some forecasts and guidance going forward all the way through to 2024. Again, uh, eBay Investor Day happening today. There was absolutely no coverage uh, of this whatsoever until about midday today. So uh, some forecasting not good for eBay coming out. Uh, so right back down here, guys. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you, it's, it's so weird that you say that, like, is eBay really that irrelevant? I thought eBay it was, was ripping. It was difficult to find coverage on that when you know eBay Soft, used dude. to be a monster. But yeah, all the way back is complete insanity. Always be careful trading uh, for events like this. It's just never chase these types, almost never chase these types of moves. 
if you get something off of a break like this, when the volume starts to heat up and you're able to catch it in the first 50 cents, fine, because your risk reward, that, you're not going to get blown out if you make this trade because it could always break the high. But if you go long up here thinking, oh, yeah, baby, let's go eat. It just a lot of times it doesn't end up well. So I'm kind of glad I stayed away from that one. Um, I, was so, I was also questioning what was happening at that particular moment. The market... We starting to go. I, I kind of I was about to make a joke about AMD, which is self-deprecating. But um, that trade that uh, that frustrated me. If I had simply held on to it for the last three hours, then I would have just gone green on that AMD trade that uh, that cost. But uh, the market is heading to the upside here. I'm not putting the trail in on. It just looks too strong at this point. So I don't want to put that trail on just yet. But the ES hasn't been able to break that top yet. Yet. I just want to um, uh, say before we go on to something here, uh, Microsoft, I just want to update this. Looking at ride this v, uh, this 50 period all the way up. Obviously, like Neil said, view ops take a little bit longer uh, <clears throat> to go. But uh, right there, 285.20. We break that. We gown. Uh, it's in the money now, 450. So we just touched 286.50. Like, unbelievable uh, run. We're long at 281.50. So it's a five-bagger. Five bagger normally means five times. Uh, but it's a nice little $5 win here uh, to the upside. And then just so you know, here comes Rivian. Here comes Rivian. Oh, I uh, was sh trying to short 4190. Uh, it got as high as 4180. I didn't even really realize it because we were going on. Uh, but yeah, I should have shorted that again. So we'll keep doing that. Would love to have a tick there short. But uh, Rivian, short, short. Let's go to the downside now and see if we can't get back into here. 4050 uh, or so for R-I-B-N. We like to answer your questions. Today, we're going to answer the question, guys. What is the best time to trade? This may seem a little bit obvious, but let's even throw it up on the screen, shall we? What is the best time to trade? There's obviously the open, there's the close, there's the midday, there's tons of volatility throughout the day. Give it to us. What's the best time to trade? All day long, because Trade TV Live is on, on all day long. But huh. Okay, all seriousness. You stole mine. I'm gonna, I'll use a very specific time. Now, I, I, I want to say the open, but very specifically, I want to talk about the opening, opening drive or opening range. 9.30 to about 9.50 to 10 o'clock. And the reason I want to say that is not to say that you have to execute at 9.30, but that a lot of times it's what happens in that first 10 to 15 minutes that can give you opportunities in a trade. Now, you can come in with a bias. I'm going to use Luce as an example here because the context was I wanted to short Luce and I wanted to short Rivian. I wanted to short Tesla on, uh, on bounces or not any bounce to the upside. And I wanted to fade each of those um, going, into, uh, going into earnings for Rivian. And all of these were weak names. However, they all started dropping really early in the pre-market. This is 9 o'clock, it flushes. Then you go back up to 9.28 and it makes another big flush. At this particular point, you've already established a downward range. What do you do? If the levels you liked were shorting it in front of 25 and a half, which is what I loved, uh, in Rivian it was 45, it was $2 away from that, Tesla wasn't going anywhere close to those levels, well, allow that opening range to decide for you. It makes a break of the previous pre-market low here at 24.40. Now you're establishing, is it going to make a press to that last shelf at $25 even? So you don't actually have to say, you don't actually have to make a trade until it tests, cannot get to that 25 level, and starts to roll over. And better yet, a lot of times what you can do is you can simply put your risk on. You could just take in a 24.80 with a 20 cent stop and then worked it in the middle of this range down here and simply played. I'll just, I'll just sit there and go two to one on the entire trade, not even try to hold it. You're just playing within the range and the momentum established here. And the best part about it is maybe you hold on to a piece of it and you have established a clean direction for the rest of the morning or the rest of the day. But it's that key window where you know volume is going to explode, where you're able to, to use that opening range to your advantage. And if, you aren't make, if you're not in a trade during this time, you can be watching a stock for a trade to develop. And because it's so early in the day, uh, it can be one of those big monster winners because if you get the right entry point, it might end up being something you can hold on to. And it also has probably established a clean out, which this had. Yeah, all up. Let me 
kind of took my time there. But I'm going to go, and you said something early, um, and it was all day. And actually, that's what I'm going with, to be honest with you, because the reason why I want to say all day, every day, is because it's a setup kind of world, right? And I think that as soon as you're comfortable with whatever setup you're looking at, you can hit these trades at any point. And I want to give an example here. I love Microsoft, right? Here's great trading in the morning, like Neil was talking about, bouncing off levels that we like, 282. But, you know, we are busy doing other things. It came up. I look for a stock that I like. It hits my levels. I go long, explode to the upside. And we just got out right now for a nice little win there, five bucks or 450. But there's the trade all the way back to the upside. And look when we took this, 1148. It just broke the levels. That's it, right? So I feel like patience to answer the question, when's the best time to trade? I just think you sit on your hands and you wait for the time that fits your profile. Some traders love the action in the morning, right? Back and forth, scalping. You know, we have people on our show say, oh, I've already made... 20 fills and I'm, and I'm already up this much money. You could do that off the open when it's a little violent and there's a lot of liquidity. But if things set up, and I'll do another example right now with Rivian. I mean, here's the short that Neil was talking about. Bang to the down. I mean, this happens at 1030, but to the downside, good trade. But then again, we like the short again in here, uh, and then now it's paying off. So it's like about looking at that. Look at SoFi. Here it is. We leave it all morning, okay? Comes down. Bases. We like when they make a base. Then we hit the long. Boom to the upside. We hit it again. Boom to the upside. These are midday trades, but the setup was there. So I know it's not the big, like, sort of sexy answer, like, oh, the best time to trade is between, you know, 9 or whatever, 9.30 and 10 or 3.30 to 4. I think we know that. That's when the volatility is there. But for me, it's just a setup game. And I think that's, you know, the, the right way to look at it, especially if you're a little more experienced. Don't go crazy off the open. Wait for your setups. And uh, for me, that's what it's about. It's a setup kind of time frame, Brendan. It's uh, the uh, old question. If you're, if you're not in your seat, you can't take advantage of the moves when they happen. I like that. So, uh, the market's open 9.30 to 4 p.m. We like to trade all day long. Uh, Danielle Shea coming up here in a few minutes, guys. So uh, stay around, uh, stick around for that. I was just going to mention, uh, we'll talk to her about Rivian, get her thoughts on what to expect for Rivian, what has happened, what is uh, going to happen here off of uh, earnings. But I uh, want to get her thoughts as well on this overall market move because we are back to recent lows here. And do we keep going? We were discussing yesterday whether or not that was just a you know, brief relief rally in an overall bear market and what it means for uh, the overall NASDAQ in a bear market. Do we continue? So, uh, Miss Shea coming up here in a few minutes, guys. Did at us as, re as well. I said, yeah, great content uh, coming up with Miss Shea. I have some ideas uh, for her as well. So we'll see if we can get uh, some talk there. But I'm going to say, okay. Hey, and thank you to Miss V. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry, it's not trade-related. She uh, hooked up more coffee for your boy because, uh, yeah, I've been uh, struggling a little bit. I've been saying oh, I've been tired. I don't know why. We are, like Part of the routine should be more sleep. I don't know how many hours you get. Uh, I, I can tell I, you. I'm, I yeah, you tell me. Uh, I was about, you know, like I try to watch um, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah a little nice. bit. So that's 11 oh, o'clock. Um, yeah, so about 11.30, I think I probably doze off. You're not going to be able to see. Um, I got have, six hours and 12 minutes, 80% recovery, which is really good for me. I have the whoop, so I, yeah, I always whoop, get this yeah. data. But that's good for me, but that's because I fell asleep putting my daughter down, so. Um, and, then, uh, and then awake, you know, when I, so I think I'm about that, about that as well. Six is okay. Yeah, 11.30 till about 6.30, so I'm about seven or so uh, hours there. And uh, okay, we're reloaded. Whoa, yes, there's uh, the market. There going. goes the market, and bye-bye goes softy. Um, you know, market go bang right here. Uh, we got out at a VWAP, at a 50-period break. I'm completely happy with that. I could care less uh, right now about, I mean, I, look. Whatever. We got out. The market just popped there. We don't really yeah, know why. I, I just got uh, U.S. Too. State Department says Russian forces Shoot. now encircle multiple Ukrainian cities. Uh, okay, that doesn't okay. seem good um, after having destroyed much of their infrastructure. I'm sorry, what? Uh, okay, that doesn't seem like it's the right story, but um, all right. Uh, anyways, market is now popping, so here we go, uh, as my main man Randy says. And here we go. Here goes so far, right back to the upside. This is the name that we're holding on. Uh, yeah, it's only a dime piece right now, but wow, this market is super accelerating right now, Brendan. Uh, if there's anything you have, 
I feel like it just popped on that news there, but that That's can't be weird, what it is. Man. Uh Russian forces like have got more control over Ukraine. I kind of feel like I want That to... doesn't seem right. So um I don't know. I don't know if there's anything there, but it's a nice little pop in the market. And let's take advantage of SoFi and take some pieces out here. Yeah, I mean I just got triggered out at that 159 on Apple myself. Uh I don't know about that headline, but that was that was going to be the target. I, saw, I had it left in there because we were resisting the top in the futures again. Right. Uh, and then it got popped through when that spike happened. That'll happen to you. If you, put a, if you put an order out there, you know, sometimes you say in certain conditions, I might want to pull it back and get it out of the way if it starts running. Well, guess what? Sometimes you just fill before you can do a darn thing about it. Uh, I said to myself, well, Here it it, comes. it's weird. Like the first thing I thought of was like, where's a firm on that? Because wow. maybe we shouldn't be going up. And my gut was telling me to just short a firm, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But uh, we have our guest. So let's... Uh, that Microsoft. Yeah, I know. I was just like, I just let everyone know. Out. Well, I got the same thing as you. I know yeah. we hit the 50 period there. Microsoft came out. And then right now, uh, we just broke through 285. But whatever, man. It's a 281.50 out 285. We'll take that 450 and uh, 334 uh, on that. Good math. And uh, watch out for this 286.50. Now, new highs of the day. But uh, without any further ado, it's the big man at the big desk. Uh, let's bring in Miss Shea, uh, Danielle Shea, VP of Options at Simpler Trading, as promised. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out, guys, on some headlines coming across here right now. But uh, in the meantime, uh, great to see you, as always, Danielle. Uh, welcome back. Let's uh, jump into a crazy market here again today. What a week it's been, obviously, leading into uh, what we got this morning. The CPI comes out exactly where it was supposed to or exactly where everyone thought it was going to. What does this mean overall as far as where we're at now and then what you know do we expect going forward as we uh, head towards what is certainly going to be a quarter point hike now next wednesday from the fed well brendan you know i just really think that there was no way that we were going to win with this data because you know if it's worse than expected obviously that's not a good situation if it's better than expected um you know that's not uh, necessarily a good situation because maybe the fed's gonna adjust and we're gonna have a surprise and I mean, right now, what we're seeing in this data is we're seeing absolutely historical levels of inflation. And people have to be aware of the fact that our money is literally disappearing as we speak. So what we need to be doing is focusing on investing, right, and looking at a long-term map for that. But the problem on the matter is, is that the market here is just so incredibly weak. And without any positive headwinds, it's just going to continue to go lower. So the only way to really invest is over a long-term time frame where you're continually adding in and, and sitting and waiting. Understand the best ideas and understand where you want to be going forward and, and work on that. I uh, love that concept. Is, is there a trade, I guess, is the best way to put it, you know, ahead of the Fed? And are you looking at putting on something on going into that? So when I'm looking at the Fed, you know, I think it's going to be a really interesting week and it's most likely going to be more of a buy the rumor, sell the news type of event, just because like you noted, I mean, it's, we're probably going to get that quarter point rate rate hike, which is what's expected. Right. And so as of right now, we're starting to see just a little bit of a move higher. We might see a little bit more of a move higher into the Fed next week. But I mean, if they come out and raise rates, I can't imagine that the market goes higher after that. The only thing that I can imagine would happen is if let's say they shock everyone and they say that they're not going to raise rates, then the market could explode. But right here, the main trades that I see or you can come in, you know, like Sean was saying, and, and trade the relative strength winners like Microsoft to the upside on these up days, but they're so few and far between. So traders should be looking for weak names on rallies to come in and short. Speaking of weak, let's go to oil. Uh, did, I guess, let's ask a question. Was that a crash that we had uh, yesterday, A, and then B, what do you see as opportunities here on, you know, what seems to be the way back down? We're almost at, you know, that spike low from yesterday as we sit here. So, you know, it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I personally, I just, I hate shorting relative strength areas of the market. I just feel like, if my attention is far better served on focusing the weak areas. So traders have been asking me like, hey, can we short this move in oil? And I mean, well, 
You know, you could have, but I didn't want to step in front of the freight train. For me, what I was looking for is, okay, this thing is so extended. It's really a buy the rumor, sell the news event as well, because everyone was waiting for the U.S. to ban Russian oil, and they did. Once that happened, it just kind of sucked the energy out of that area. But the fact of the matter is is that these, the price of oil is due to geopolitical conditions and it's not going to get lower. So while we had a news related pullback, I, I wouldn't really consider it a crash. I would just consider it a reversion to the mean and pullback. This is my favorite spot to step in when I can actually get relative strength longs like Exxon, like Chevron and follow along with the trend instead of going against it. James, uh, the past couple of days here, even as we've you know, seeing this continuation in uh, the weakness of oil. Uh, I want to get your thought on that uh, geopolitical uh, type of idea here. How do we, A, kind of manage risk in an environment like this from an option standpoint? Is there a way you can maneuver yourself to make sure, you know, you're still available to capture those outside moves that we're seeing, but also, you know, protect yourself along the way? Well, you know, one of the most popular trades trades right now is just going to be shorting the indexes, especially when they do rally up into resistance. If you look at the NASDAQ right now, um, it's absolutely the weaker link of the indexes. And right now on the daily chart, we're seeing the price action rally back up to the 8 EMA. This is actually a, it's a really weak rally. I mean, the NASDAQ could rally up to the 21, up to the 34. That would be all the way up at 14,500 points. And we would still be in a downtrend. So, you know, I know everyone was excited about the rally yesterday, but this is a weak market and we're, we're just, we're not seeing any type of consistent buying. So if you want to be protected, the best thing to do is look at the indexes and short them on these rallies. As that gets to bear market territory officially earlier this week, how does that change your approach as far as uh, everyone knows you're, you're a big fan of trading these names, these big names in uh, the NASDAQ. How are you going to shift gears here and manage around that idea that we're down so significantly? Well, I mean, traders really have to be focusing on fading big moves because the way that this market has traded is, you know, we'll get a day or two of strong price action and that will trick traders into thinking, oh my gosh, you know, the low is in, let's start buying. This is a great plan. And that's exactly when everything rolls back over. When you're in a bear market like that, those bear market rallies just have a way of hitting the euphoria in a trader. What you can do is obviously, I mean, you can day trade those names higher. You can trade Microsoft higher. You can trade Amazon, Tesla higher on those days. But what you need to do is don't convince yourself that just because, you know, Nvidia is up 6% one day, that doesn't mean that we're not in a bear market. So you want to fade those big moves. And on the up days, you can focus on the relative strength winners. Us. Hey, what's up, Danielle? Uh, hey, yeah, normally we get a uh, heads up on that. Thanks, Randy, uh, for that one. But uh, Danielle, how's it going? And happy belated International Women's Day uh, as well. Thank you for providing uh, such great content for our viewers. Oh, thank you. Okay, great quickly, um, what exactly is a leap? And why do I keep hearing people saying uh, buy leaps on the NASDAQ? Because uh, for the long side, like I'm thinking that maybe we have couple more weeks, maybe a couple more months of downside. But if I really think the NASDAQ is going to close maybe even higher for the year, something like that, what does it mean when I hear people saying just buy some leaps, like 2024 leaps or something like that? Uh, what does that mean? And, and uh, if you can explain that as basic uh, for a guy like me as you possibly could. <laughs> of course. So it's just basically a long dated option. When you're buying a long dated option, it just gives you the flexibility that, you know, if, if the NASDAQ keeps going down for another two or three weeks, your time frame is going to be a year, two, three years out. The problem with options is that they expire. Okay. And so when you're looking at options that expire next week or the week after, if you say, hey, you know, I think the NASDAQ is going to rally and it doesn't, your option's going to expire worthless and your investment disappears. When you pay that money for an option that has a couple weeks till expiration, known as a leap, a leap, not leaf, leap, <laughs> then you have time on your side. So it's just one of those things, well, well, surely in the next year or two, we're going to be higher than lower. The, the other problem with this, though, is they're going to be a lot more expensive. So you have to keep that in mind.
Is that something that you ever put on or anything is uh, on an index or do you play a little shorter term? Honestly, I don't. With my options trading, um, I'm usually going to be really between anywhere between overnight and about 30 days, maybe 45. I like to keep that, you know, in one account separate. And then I keep my investments in additional accounts. And so if I'm going to do a long term trade, primarily, I'm just going to do it with stock. So not something that I employ on a regular basis. Thanks for the education, Danielle. Neil, my man. I want some more education here because you, you mentioned something, of course, you can play the rallies in, in strong stocks, but overall the market's been a sell and sell the indexes. So we just had the death cross in the queues that, you know, you get the 50 break in the 200. Uh, a few days ago, I forget exactly how many days, but a few days ago we just had that. Shorting any kind of a pop has been working this year, right, as an overall trading strategy. But what, what signal would you be looking for? Maybe it's the Fed making a certain move, a certain number of rate hikes, or something to do with the balance sheet, or maybe it's a technical signal. At what point would you, would you say, okay, you have to, we have to start rethinking that notion because you know, you're already down 20% in bear market territory. What is that point where it flips and you say, okay, I need to be thinking about the other side of this trade and uh, looking to start to go to those longs. You know, shorting every single pop is no longer uh, gonna be viable. Of course. So, I mean, for me personally, it's not necessarily a, a macro factor, even though obviously that does, you know, drive the news and it drives sentiment. For me, what I really look for in that respect is going to be technicals. I would look for the primary indexes to break up above resistance. If you look at the charts right now, I mean, we're so far below resistance of these points. Um, typically, and let's see, I do have the NASDAQ up here. So Typically with the NASDAQ, I mean, I'm going to look for it to break up above the 50, 100, and 200 simple moving averages on the daily charts. I'm going to want to see it break up through those levels on high volume with momentum more than one trading day in a row, which, I mean, it would have to be many more trading days in a row at this point because we're down at 13,600. And your 50 simples up at 14,700. You've got your 200 simple, which is the key line in the sand, up at 15,000. So, I mean, you have, you know, 1,400 points of room where we could trade to the upside, where it's still, in my opinion, a bear market rally. Once you get above that level, once you see Microsoft, Google, Amazon, up above their 200 simples and preferably above the 50 simple, that's the point in time where I would look to start trading, you know, on a swing basis to the upside. But for now, I mean, you can trade between here and there on those rallies higher. Perfect answer. And I'm going to note that, of course, I don't think you mentioned Facebook in there. We just had this discussion yesterday. No, we, don't, we don't talk about Facebook. We don't talk about Facebook in that group anymore. No. It's just, it is no. what it is. I've never even really heard of that name before. I've never, I don't. <laughs> It's a meta, Facebook, something like that. I don't know anything about it. I exactly. Mean, I don't know. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Danielle. And uh, by the way, you're getting some love in the chat uh, over uh, the Disney uh, call because uh, clearly uh, that's going southbound still under some pressure. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I mean, you know, a lot of these tickers and it's crazy because that's why I have to have my long term and short term accounts separate because, I mean, I'm a Disney share, shareholder. I like the stock. I like the company, but this is a short right now. And same thing with Facebook, with Netflix, with basically anything in ARC. And I mean, you can still like the company and use the product, but look at that technical pattern and down she goes. So, you know, short-term trades, long-term investments, that's the way I do it. I uh, know you're busy, Danielle, so we want to get you out of here. But uh, real quick, uh, Rivian. I completely forgot to ask you about Rivian. What do we think here going into uh, the report aftermarket tonight? Where do we go from here? All right. So this one is, first of all, I have to tell you I'm a, I'm a little biased because I love Tesla and I love Elon Musk. But I will tell you from a technical pattern, I mean, this chart is just a disaster, Okay. You have a situation where what? So last quarter, they let me get up my earnings stats here. We only have reported um, two, what, one quarter on this. And last quarter, they gapped down 8.2%. They're down on their lows. They're below their IPO price. Um, they've fallen the entire time going into earnings. This structure to me is setting up for what I like to call the earnings explosion where a company just gets completely destroyed on the report. So the way that I've been trading these is 
you know, you can try to come in and short them before the report. The problem with that is, especially in the options market, the options are very expensive. And if you're wrong, you're going to lose your money. So what I've been doing with these is I've been notating them prior to the reports because they fit this downtrend pattern. And then upon the report, if there's, let's say there's some miracle and Rivion it ends up at $55 tomorrow. Um, it has a, you know, $6 expected move. Let, let's say that it does. I mean, that's a perfect spot to short it because most earnings moves have been fading. Now let's say it does roll over and die tomorrow. Then I would just trade it and follow the momentum lower. But I just, I don't see any situation in which this chart pattern starts to look good. I think you would be uh, in the uh, popular group with that uh, assessment. Uh, it seems to be the uh, case going forward here. Daniel Shea, <laughs> VP of Options at Simpler Trading. We appreciate your time as always. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Uh, great stuff as always. Uh, tons of ideas there, guys, for uh, Ms. Shea. We love it, and that's always good. Always that's what good. it's all about. It's all about getting ideas. Bye, bye, Rivian. Right? It's it's you know what's oh it's not it's not hilarious. I shouldn't say that, but uh, we're talking about that that move up in the futures. It's like it'll get taken out there, trying to hold the trend. Microsoft, uh, uh, Apple as well, uh, and then we're like at those highs quickly. On I'm not really sure what made that move up in the futures. And a Rivian with a reload. The first thing I did is say a, a firm at these levels. Okay, fine, 36. It's back to VWAP. So you kind of go back to the well. Like, what is the stock that either worked for you short that was a good level that you like? Or what's the stock that's been working uh, for relative weakness that you have a bit of a read on? Whatever it might be. Like, know where you're going when, when something crazy happens and you're like, oh, I need to play this reversal. I need to, I need to actionally take a trade here. And maybe you don't want to jump in and short the futures in front of the freight train. You'd rather pick on uh, something like an Affirm or jump on Rivian, which, of course, today is going to be big on earnings. We're in a power hour, man. And it looks like, uh, yeah, volatility is going to be right here again. So a bit of a pullback off those highs. Still a nice bounce overall in the future. Uh, you know, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I thought you were done when you said future. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, but no, we, uh, we took advantage of that bounce in the future uh, as well because we were able to get out of the majority of our SoFi. It came right back into this level. I was kicking myself for not getting out at 45 before. So what the heck, man? We'll take 43s and 44s. I did have one piece left to see if we broke uh, above 46 there. But we take out the 50 period again back to the downside. And now we're holding like small, small. Um, it's not too small. It's like 20% left or less. No, less less than that uh, left of our original position but there's SoFi just just you know babied this thing all the way up babied it here as well and I mean you know that's how we're going to trade and at the end of the day I always feel like if I hold out for the ultimate high and it doesn't come through then I'm going to then I just get mad uh, so that's that out right there and then just an update as well on Rivian uh, you know so we take another piece out and, and this is I put this on right in front of you guys uh, today as well 4150 uh, sorry 4140 there we just took it out at 85 I feel like it was bouncing around there with Rivian. It came down a couple times, bounced and kept going back up there. Uh, and then the market kind of took down that 50 period. So now we'll hold it. We only got out of a third of our position. Remember, it was an average position from here to here. And now we'll go back to the downside. So I am bidding now 40 30s. We've talked about that. Hopefully we can get a piece. And then if it breaks, I mean, I'm only doing a third, a third, a third. So we still have some on here, some pressure coming into Rivian, into the close. So for me, we're going to hold this. We're going to go back down here to 40 like i said we're bidding 40 30 and then if we crack lower then we'll have it on board anyways so i think 40 30 is a good call here for rivian let's not get too greedy there's less than an hour left and then it's earnings time plus futures pulling back what's up Ms. v hey guys i wanted to share my trade on tesla today daniel said she loves tesla so do i here I am. I picked Tesla uh, in a long trade at 8.14 near the day lows. And my last out was 8.27. I absolutely love it. Around $13 per share in profit. Tesla kept ripping all the way until 8.36. But anyways, very satisfied with this long trade on Tesla. And guys, while I'm here, please smash the like button. We have more than 3,000 people watching and not even 500 likes. I think we provide great educational and entertaining content so if you think so too please support and like this video back to you guys how about that that's a great we like it that's a great trade it's a great trade so you mean like the law of the bottom 
Well, I mean, it's it well, is, they, it yeah. is, man. Look yeah. at that. Like I'm that's sitting great. here. We talked. We had Tesla in our I'm rundown. I'm like, give up this seat. I'm like 800 bucks. Yeah, that's the level. You got to wait for 800 to get it. But hey, you know, double bottom, 810 consolidation break right above VWAP. Get it out. They had the spike in the futures. You know, help the second part of the trade, but it was well on its way anyways at that particular point. So uh, good, good on you, Miss V. I like. Uh, we love seeing that. Tesla's not an easy. It's not an easy stock to trade. It's more about, look, I, we're, I, I think all of us, including Pratt, and I mean, it's, look, all the credit goes to Ms. V. She's putting in the time, the work to yeah. look at these things. And I actually heard her say something on the show today on Pratt show, like, there was a double top or something. Like, I know, I'm not even sure, like, you know, that's great, uh, the, the knowledge that she's gained. And I want to give a big shout out to Ms. V for all of that. And, and I think it's good for us, too, because it just shows, you know, the more, the more access you have, the more time you spend in front of a computer um, and, and in front of your level two screens and trade and trying to educate. I mean, uh, Ms. V came to us with zero experience yeah. uh, in the markets and now is trading what I think is an extremely hard name to day trade. So, uh, mind you, she's really just trading it because she loves the cars. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, and that's what we say all the we'll time. We'll put the hours in on the charts. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, Pick your stock. It doesn't matter. You know that I like Microsoft. Neil kind of likes everything. I don't. I don't think you really have a specific. Stock. I like. Okay, I love shorting parabolic movers. No, no. But uh, what about just? A, I know. But what about just like? Is there right now a firm? A firm. Yeah. Well, right that's now right. a firm. I could have probably. But it just it moves I for me. Like because that. before that it was Moderna to the short side, yeah, and now yeah. it's been a firm recently. You used to trade Virgin a lot. For, yeah, but Virgin. The problem with the Virgin range. Galactic is like it's it got it got low enough that I don't. It's too low that it's not moving. Every time I try way. to short a pop, I get burned. So yeah. it doesn't really work the same. Way on Virgin Galactic anymore, so it's what it is. All right, what's um, let's go. I, I want to go. I know Brendan's busy now, but we're gonna ask him what his favorite stock to trade is, uh, in a second. So it's gonna be Dada. Microsoft, Affirm, Tesla, Dada. and uh, no, I don't think it's gonna be Dada, but I do have that thing here. I'm gonna hit it anyways. There it is. Dada. That was good. Um, okay, uh, let's go. When Brendan's ready, he'll come with that uh, fire for us as well. Um, what about Alibaba today? I noticed that that is down. Uh, Oh, he's got it already. All right, what's up, Brando? Uh, I, I was going to say, uh, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. Uh, I was going to say any of the chip stocks because yes. of the opportunity. Uh, and I was just actually discussing this with, uh, with Valeria here beside me. In the sense that you still get very wide ranges, you get the volatility, you get the liquidity, and it, they, they move very clean. There, there's clean moves. There isn't the nonsense that happens in, in some of the other stocks. So... I mean, pick one, any of them, AMD, NVIDIA, like whatever. AMAT even, you know, a little bit thinner uh, as far as liquidity. But, yeah, I'll go with uh, the chip stocks. Actually, I want to throw one in there because uh, I traded MU today after trading uh, AMD. Well, yeah, MU. And I'm going to start trading Micron more. Like, I would actually, I would say if there's a third day trading chip stock, right now Micron's got the same types of levels, volatility, yeah. Yeah. but it tends to trade pretty well here. Uh, I love it. I, just sort of along these lines, I know we'll, we'll finish up and get to the market for a second, but one of the cooler things, Sean and I have done, like we've risk managed own a floor together uh, and mentored traders over the years. One of the coolest things is when a trader makes a leap, because like my favorite memory, and you might, you might remember this, is like one of our early traders, he still trades now, he's really good. Yeah. Not to say his name or anything, but when he had his first big trade and he gets up, and starts doing like the coolest. It's almost like Tony's dance. He did like a little happy dance when he hit like a huge trade. I he remember did. it was one of the coolest and most fun things to see. I want Tony on the bell tonight, by Let's the way. Let's get Tony on the bell because it was the same Tony, dance. Sorry, Miss V. I'm, Basically the same dance. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. <laughs> Me. Okay, good. All right. I was going to say, I, uh, I was going to, should have asked Ms. V first, but um, I think we're going to get Tony on the bell, and we haven't even mentioned it. Tony, give me a thumbs up if uh, he's good to go. He's good to go. Uh, and the thing about Tony's today, the reason why I want him on, A, is for the dance, yes. uh, and then B, he has a sick shirt on. Wait till you see this shirt. Um, I don't, do not show it. Whatever you do, you people have to wait till 3.59 to see what Tony's got. And it's a great shirt, and I'm jealous of it, that's for sure. And I think you guys will be when you do finally uh, see that as well. But, yeah, AMD would have been uh, another one of those names for me as well. Yeah, Good call there, Brendo. And I think is staying MU, Micron, TSM as well. Uh, the semis are very, very good because they're so active all of the time for it also. There you go. you gotta, you got to have names that you want to go to when the market's moving that make sense to you so that you can – you don't necessarily have to do as much work uh, to jump in and dive into the trade. I'll bite for you guys because people keep talking about Hoth. And I look at penny stocks from time to time. And I remember this one. I'm a nerd, so, you know, Empire Strikes Back. I've traded the stock before. Probably already done. So I, someone's like, jo join the short on this stock. It already went to 94 cents. 
Um, and usually we like to play off a dollar level on some of these. And you're already getting a pretty big pullback. Looks like the volume's already starting to taper off. I'm not sure what there is to do with this unless it makes another push higher. Like, you've already, it's given you the trade. Like, this is what you look for. You look parabolic move. It doesn't quite get to 95 or a dollar, but close enough. Pulls right back in 80 cents. That's, that's, that's the move. That's the trade you want to put on. Consolidating down here, what are you shorting 86 to give it to 94? Yeah, let's risk 7%. To get what? I'm not sure. So I think that's, if you got it short, I think you've already made a nice one. You're holding on to some of your position uh, for potential further pullback. Uh, as I say that, pulling back, pulling back up is a firm in the context of the market not back at the highs. It's back at that 36 level. I don't know if I want to fight, fight this with the market not at the high when we're retesting this uh, 36. I'm not going to average into it unless I see, you know, a big push down in the futures and I can still get it around those nines. I'd rather just... Take the W, stop out through the high of the day for the last of the shares and move on to the next trade. It seems like despite how violently that move came up, taking it out on that spike was the right call. Like Apple barely went any further before dipping back into VWAP. And, you know, the ES and the NASDAQ, so the NASDAQ just barely broke the 930 high before pulling back. The ES broke that high from the morning. It's still there. Uh, so I don't want to force anything with only about 45 minutes to go. But I will mention that ARGI. I sort of talked about how that three, the 475 was now the level. It capitulated again. And then when it held four bucks, which is previous support, that's now turned into a resistance level. So given how the selling occurred in this stock, I don't think I could say go long. Maybe it's not done. It's still way up on the day. And it's still, if you think about the first dip back, it's not even close to where that support was at 280. Um, so maybe it bounces off that or something along those lines. But after this, I'm thinking only short and the $4 level would be the next play I'd make. I don't know if I want to hold it past four because really 75 is a big level. Uh, but if it pops into that four range, you'll see me short on ARGI. AGRI. Uh, all right. Um, new position alert right now, Facebook. Uh, we'll get into this one. It's a positive name for us today, a big time positive name for us uh, today, as you can see. Uh, it was good shorts, then we went long. It was good uh, overall. Actually, no, that was the last piece. We never went long. Uh, it was short, short, short Facebook. As I look over, I'm like, how did I make so much money on it? But it must have been uh, this bottom that we took there that we held a little bit. And Oh, yeah, that's what it was. All of these are cash, and then that one was out right there. So that's an, oh, yeah, that's right. People were asking, how's your price? 195.17, that's right. So that was 195.17 there, and then the last piece is out, 195.44. That's why we cashed out, because 195.17 turned into 193.70. So there it goes. Here we go. Facebook right away, man. We just went long right now, and we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. You know, the funny thing is, Neil, Neil whispered to me because we heard Pratt back there. I'm going to blow up his scene right now. He was like, oh, I'm holding this short. See, there he is. I see you, Brad, uh, because he's literally right over our shoulder here. Yep. I goes, oh, man, I've got huge, you know what? I'm holding the short into the close. The market's going down. Here we go. I'm the king trader. Put up, put up the screen here. Yeah, Brad knows this is true. No, put up my screen right now. Yeah, I'm the man. I've got this top. All is good. I even heard him telling his boys, I'm holding this into the close. Ain't nothing going to stop me now. And then all of a sudden this happened, and I don't Maybe he's still in it. But I, I hear the silence now. You know. Yeah. It's like, but you, silencio. But you know what it is, Silencio, man. Bruno. That's like, you never want to be saying that. Like well, if, and you said it out of the corner of your... The first, your, your, the first thing I said was, no, oh, you never want to be yeah, saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've always... Hey, when you're confident, you're confident. I got to you know, give you I love the confidence. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you don't need to be like, oh, I'm never getting out of it. Bang. It's fine. Ride the winning trade. But just, it's cool. Be cool about it. I'm never getting out. Yeah, there's Facebook. You're day right trading. There. You're getting out <laughs> eventually. I mean, so from never getting out to me with the lack of diamond hands, and there it is again. We just rain that money out, man. Cash register go burr on Facebook right there. A nice little long at 30, out at 80. I'll take 50 cents in literally a minute right there. So that's it. Long there, out there. We still hold for the high. Let's see if Facebook keeps going upside there. Um, and we have it if it does. So, so far, so good uh, on that one as we're going. Thanks, guys. Yeah, people loving the chat here. Look, that's that's why we're here, right? Like, I am not just another pretty oh, sure. face because if that was the case, then we'd all be in trouble. So we're here to throw down some uh, fun times. I love this suggestion, Alex. You Alex what? Enzo, he said he should have to do 20 push-ups. Like, if you break, like, an obvious rule. But I don't think he was breaking a rule there. He was just uh, trying, to, trying to ball he, out. I don't, I don't think he would be able to say that that's a reasonable thing. I'm holding it into the – because – He's still short. I mean, he's I know, still but you have to have an out. He knows he has to have an out. <laughs> no. Right? He has an out. He has an out. He okay, has an so out. Okay, so you were just – Four o'clock. 
he has an out. So we'll wait to see four o'clock uh, when that comes through. Uh, it's time-based out. Here we go, here we go, here we go, let's go. Uh, Pratt getting excited, we're all getting excited. Uh, I'm not because I'm long, so what the hell. Uh, but okay, um, all right, so here we go uh, for Randy. But all right, so that's a trade we just took on. So we're gonna go two for two for you, three for three for you actually on the show. Uh, that's a SoFi long that we took there, bang. Uh, oh no, actually we took that before, just before we went on the air. Um, and then Facebook we took for you as well. That's 50 cents in the money. And we took the Rivian short for you as well. We already cashed some out there at 80 and now we'll look lower. Remember, Rivian does report uh, tonight so we'll wait to see there and I wanted to look quickly Neil at Neo because uh, there it is it's at its low of well close enough to its low of the day anyways uh, you're 20 Ooh. cents away here Neo just threw up all over itself today it was a great day yesterday for Neo shareholders I remember at this time Randy brought us Volkswagen and Neo was up 13 percent well now it is down that exact same percentage so um, you know when you see that it's obviously down more because 13 percent down after an up 13% day is lower the next day, right? Because 13% on a lower this number. This just actually happens. Uh, I, I got to bring this up. Because yeah, go ahead. It's not often, look, man, it's, it, it ain't about the 100. Uh, it? But just, if you say you're going to super chat this, and then uh, we're going to put it on screen. Uh, it's Internet Enforcers. I'll super chat 100 right now if Prag can do 20 push-ups without a break. <laughs> and given, look, given that the trade he's in, he's holding to 4 o'clock anyways, it's not like he has anything else to do. Because he's holding the trade till 4 o'clock. So can he do 20 push-ups in a row? Look, if that gets to 200, then we'll just give Pratt a 50 uh, right out of our pocket. And he can do it right now if he wants to. But that's, that's up to that's him. That's up to him. Um, it's up to him. Yeah, I don't I'm think he saying. wants to do that. I'm just saying he got called out. 4,000 likes. And, and more Super Chats. We like the likes uh, better. Do you remember Gus? Likes are better than money, First man. of all, do you remember Gus? I remember Gus. He and threw, no, Gus threw down. He did like 80 push-ups. Like, I was dude like, Dude didn't what? stop, man. Gus was like a maniac that And he that ain't that day. young. I'm just... Well, you don't have to throw him under the bus right What there. I'm just saying, if, if you watch oh, it time, come on, man. Age is just like, a number, man. I call myself uh, old all the time. Damn. I'm just saying. I am. Damn, Neil. I am old. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's move on. That was fun. Um, yeah, throw down that internet for hey, Come on, you got to give us at least 10 bucks uh, for bringing that up. Okay, uh, people want to look at DraftKings. Why the hell not? Uh, it's March. What? Uh, it's March Madness time. That's why there? people bringing up DraftKings. Hello, DraftKings. Uh, welcome MLB's to the back. Jungle is that there. it? Um, could be. Yeah, could, some. You know what? It could be related to MLB. Like, maybe uh, that would make that would make that would make a lot of sense. Actually, that would make sense. if baseball was back, that would make a lot of sense. But I don't. Again, Long that seems sense. like decent. I don't know. They now, were close. Now Neil's just union full. <laughs> like yeah, union full. Yes, on the latest uh, CBA proposal. I told you they were close yesterday, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, that's probably the reason for the spike. I don't know that it. It's it a short get, here at 18 yeah, anyway. I should have shorted 18 because look at the top. Zoom out, man. I should have shorted 18. I'll short. I'm short now. So I'm, I'm short DraftKings right now off this move. We're just going to make this play. Forget about it. Uh, we'll wait for it to see where it goes back into the downside here. Uh, first leg out, obviously, is always the same. Bye-bye, Rivian, by the way, to the downside as we continue to trade that name uh, back down. We'll put a bid now near 50 uh, right now if we can get it back. That's the pre-market low of 50. Uh, and then we'll just see if it pulls back in instantly short as soon as we I mean I should have shorted it a little bit earlier than that but here we go uh, right back down to the downside and bye bye yeah, uh, Rivian trying to break through if Rivian can break through 68 70 that that's that's you know signaling me to get that fill down here at 40 30 uh, we'll see actually I'm gonna go a little bit lower than that I feel like that's a better trade uh, DraftKings right now uh, okay how low did it just go there we, we, we almost got filled there I think uh, to the downside uh, there it is Internet of Forces there it goes thank you so much uh, Right there. Uh, okay, he wants me or Prad to do it. So there's the 10 bucks. Thank you so much. Uh, we will look at that. Okay, Rivian just broke lower. Thank you so much, Internet and Forces, uh, for the super chat. Regardless of what it's for, that, that, that means a lot to us. Thank you uh, so much for that. But we're trading mode right now. So, uh, okay, DraftKings, we did punch that short on whatever the heck that was. Brennan working like a madman over there trying to find it. out for us what's going on. Uh, but DraftKings right now, we're in the Bye -bye. 50s. We'll just take a 54, 55 here, something like that, then hold the rest and see if we can get back down here. So that's my plan of action. I don't know if we take out the low, but that's DraftKings. We're going to see about it uh, going to the downside. And by the way, see you later, Rivian. It just took out that 70. Let's see how far we can go to the downside right now. I might exit this Facebook. The market is going to the downside. What's up, Brandon? Uh, still trying to find an actual link to show you uh, physically, but uh, there are reports, guys, floating around that 
a tentative deal has been done between the Players Association and the MLB. Yeah, I mean, that just means I have some, some setting up to do in my fantasy league because somehow I got stuck. But it's accepted? But what? I, I actually I don't. guess, you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. As long as, as, long as they, they think it's a I'm date, gonna that's going to be the reason. But the fade, was a, it's a good play. I got, I got into Agri on a shelf break because there was a bit of a buyer at 340. I should have waited for $4, but I saw this shell start to go, and I remember trading it at this exact same price earlier. You'll see way back here, yeah. I was trading it off of that $350, and then one of our better shorts, when it came back in and gave this nice move uh, into about $350, I'm like, oh, it's about the same trade I can put in off that $350 level when the buyer broke at $340. I ended up getting slipped to $36, uh, but I am now in another Agri short uh, AGRI, which I did catch myself there. Uh, when I made that mistake, but I AGRI to the short side. DraftKings moving down, but the market also coming back down. That's worth mentioning uh, here. So probably going to be helping that trade. This is the NASDAQ just pulling back off those highs. Same thing happening overall uh, in the ES. So it uh, looks like that's going to only help any shorts that you got. Here we go. Uh, let's go with uh, mac and cheese uh, because that was easy, as easy as mac and cheesy uh, right there. Home run. Hopefully we'll be seeing some of those this year. Um, and it's not a big trade. We're going to hold the last piece. It's only because, you know, now that we know that's the news, I think that's a catalyst enough for DraftKings. I mean, I know there's not huge gambling on MLB, but hey, there's games every single day. Uh, so as far as the revenue is concerned, it's there, man. I mean, props, things like that. I could whatever man I could talk about sports gambling for literally forever uh, my account never seems to have enough money in it because I always lose uh, but we'll go to the downside here with DraftKings here it comes we took it out at 60 now it's starting to make the move back to the downside my bid is in the 20s right here right at view up 21 17 21 uh, for DraftKings and then we're going to go to Brendan in a second we just we're taking this out on SoFi as the market's coming back down we'll hold we'll try to hold one little piece uh, for the rest and see if we fly here that's going Rivian you know, to be honest with you, I thought that it was going to take that 70 and then start to go down, but it looks like it stopped at 60 uh, right there, Rivian. So right now, we're going to hold out for that. My bid, just to double check, I actually canceled it because I thought it was really going to go there, but I'm going to put it back here. 40-30 makes sense to me for Rivian. Next piece out, 40-30. Brendo? Uh, right on ESPN's Twitter feed there, guys. Uh, so there it is. Uh, MLB, MLBPA reaching a tentative agreement on a new labor deal. There, there you is. go, tentative there agreement. Is. There it is. There and I'll, I'll answer this question. I thought we talked about this already, but Astralis Lux asked who won fantasy football, Neil or Sean. Neither one of us won. The, the most infamous person in our fantasy league ended up uh, winning in the finals. And when I say infamous, his, his championship has an asterisk, which shouldn't happen in fantasy football. And he was so bad before that that we actually printed up shirts commemorating. Yeah, I, 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 lost, I lost mine, but we printed up shirts that he had that everyone would wear over how bad he was over like 10 years. Uh, but he won a ship and uh, that, that was him. I lost to him in the finals, um, but I didn't play. I, hmm. Did I play you in the semis? Or was that, did I play Jay? I don't remember. Uh, it so might have been ago. me. Who I did actually I lose to? I, lo I mean, I lost in the semis. Yeah. So anyways, I don't know. Oh, by the way, that A-G-R-I. Stupid Dak Prescott. Got right. He's so hot and cold, Dallas. I know, I you hate know that I guy. That. Uh, well, I mean, I like him, but okay. Um, all right, so I want to talk about something. We already got out of our DraftKings. Oh, uh, this oh. is what it is. I mean, we're going to go to Ms. V. We have a few new members. We could uh, say what's up to the members uh, as well. Ms. V will do that uh, for you guys in a second. There was a name uh, that I wanted to look at. Oh, uh, Palantir bounced off 12. So shout out to Henry uh, as well today. Again, a big bounce off 12 bucks for Palantir. It's up that 2% in a minus percent. 1% market, so that's a nice move. And again, it's not, I, I do own shares of Palantir, but it's not really a big, big, huge position. I, I still like it for the long term. I'm not adding down here. I like to get, to get sub 10 before we add any of these high names, uh, high valuation names to the uh, board for me. But uh, it wasn't even Palantir. There must have been something else, but I'll think about what it was. Uh, let me know when we're ready to go to Ms. V here. Uh, Brendan and Lucas are uh, discussing something. Let's go over to CrowdStrike real quick here. 192. So it does bounce off that bottom again, like Brendan brought it to us. Talked about that little dip down in that you know I don't know what caused that probably the market with a move down but we'll see right now imbalances coming in 20 minutes uh, when we get when we get the update we will find out uh, what it's looking like I believe yesterday was to the sell side
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, quickly, uh, AGRI had a buyer at 331 that just kept holding it up there. I took some out in front of 330. Uh, sorry, 330. I took some out of 331. That's where the buyer was at 30s. I just reloaded at that 340 area and might try to scalp it in that range uh, until that 330 breaks. And someone said, oh, why wouldn't you think about the long? I did mention that if it got to like 280 to 3, like this is the channel that I felt like more like would be better support after the way it traded after 475 and breaking four dollars it just made more sense to me if you're thinking along and it might be too late in the day for this uh at that 280 level so it's not that i have anything against it it's still up 100 percent and it's doing good volume it was just that it wasn't at a level that i particularly like and i am not going to forget i've uh, sww 17033 that's the actual name i have not forgotten about blink we talked about this one uh they were uh they're reporting they have a monster level on the daily chart. Like anything with a short interest as big as uh, uh, Blinks, with a level like this to be broken, this is really spicy. It could, sometimes you get that late day move and it might break that level. I actually had a stop order most of the day. I did cancel it around lunchtime. It, it might make sense to put that one back on because if we can take these levels out of the 26 area uh, on, the, on the daily chart, it's just gorgeous uh, for room to the upside. You throw in the short interest and uh, this has, is a great trade, but... With a 3.30, 20 minutes to imbalances, you're running out of time for this to happen. It might just be one of those where it gets taken out in the aftermarket and then not much you can do about it on the day trade because you want the cover of the liquidity at 26, you know, the momentum of that move and being able to execute in the open market. Those are things obviously we try to do, but it's a great looking level, great looking situation uh, for potential squeeze tomorrow. Hmm. Oracle also uh, reporting uh, tomorrow. I don't know. I don't like what, which way do we want to go in the market right now? I mean, I was looking at look at TDOC. According I to mean, Prad down. Down, yeah. Uh, but I look at TDOC here. It's a New York name. Anything, I mean, Danielle mentioned anything ARC related is getting killed uh, right now. I think yeah, one of my best. ARC. Yeah. One of my best trades um, going in, in this whole craziness was when I actually got out of this at 86 bucks uh, Teladoc and like you know right now it seems like oh my god it was right here it was right on this bump it was just getting killed to the downside and we we're able to get out right here right on this bump I remember the day clearly and I tweeted it out that we're out of here now TDOC is at its 52 week low again um, we were just it made a nice bounce up to 80 bucks again that could have been another selling spot but right back down in here so some of these arc um, names just not going very well. A firm go boom. Let's see what's going on with a firm here as well. Uh, oh, I, I would say, it. when people say boom, I always figure it's to the upside. Not really, but it is a nice move a here. Bit. We can check out PayPal and Square. Early mock. Uh, Prad just told us 3 million to the buy side. We normally say stuff with a B. Whenever we say 3 million, that's nothing. It needs to be north or south of like 500 million. Plus or minus is what we're looking for on that one. Uh, Brendan. Yeah, not a lot. Uh, Equinor, which uh, is the former Statoil. Uh, uh, I forget what the ticker was, but anyways, uh, just out saying it's EQNR now. Uh, they just came out and said they're no longer going to trade uh, Russian oil. Uh, so a bit of a move there. Alta Beauty as well, ULTA, coming up tonight after market also for earnings. So uh, day highs just got taken out there on some volume for ULTA. A good one. I mean, ultimately, we've talked. Oh goodness, I typed in. Did I? Get, I thought I didn't go NZ. I had like NQ there. Uh, so my Ultra Beauty chart doesn't want to come up now because I what made that ill-fated mistake. Uh, but I, I can tell you the executions won't be on here. But I can I can tell you when we had that short off of 36, we got most of it out in front of VWAP, and then it did make the 36 break. So I stopped out here. I got out at about 05, so a couple of pennies worth of slippage in that situation, and it's continuing to run. So no need to get stubborn about the trade. Just going to end up taking it out. Um, my chart stops freezing on me. I'll be able to show you uh, the actual execution. But the market didn't break higher. That was the key thing. Like a firm was going back to those levels without the market actually breaking higher. And that's why you got to have a tight stop. Because for whatever reason, it wanted to go counter trend there. All right, uh, just quickly here, um, I want to look at CrowdStrike again. People are asking about DocuSign, and that's why I want to look at it. So uh, hold on a second. First. Yesterday, we called CrowdStrike when it was all the way down here um, at one, whatever it was yesterday. Was it 160 or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was 160 last night. I called the 200 print today. We got it. Well, close enough. The high is 198.67. That was a good call for CrowdStrike. But again, why did, did, did I make that call? 
uh, you know, it's just because of Pan W, right? Palo Alto uh, had a good report as well. So I figured CrowdStrike would be the one. I don't know. I don't really know something similar for DocuSign. Uh, we can look at maybe at Adobe uh, to see what they've been doing as well. But DocuSign really makes me want to throw up. I really like this company. Uh, but can we find out, Brendan, when Adobe's, what day that report was? Because um, that may give me a little bit more aid here uh, to help you guys. But this goes from 310 down to 100 bucks. I mean, look, chopped into a third. It's actually not that bad because it looks bad and it's bad. But you have other names that have been just destroyed way more than this, right? What was the firm's high? 180. Uh, Upstart as well as another name uh, that had realistic highs. Fastly. And uh, well, yeah, Fastly, C3AI. I mean, anyways, goes on and on. But, um, you know, some of these names chopped into a third isn't that bad. I really like DocuSign. I think that they're well used. Um, I know there's a lot of companies that have this, especially with uh, the work from home. You know, you can electronically sign a legal document. And, and to me, that makes a lot of sense. And I think there's a big space for that. Housing purchases, this and that, all using DocuSign. So when you look at the daily chart here, Adobe March 22nd. OK, so hold on a second. ADBE. Uh, so and I saw a big candle up on Adobe. And I was wondering if that was the earnings day there. So uh, when and if this loads, March 20, March 20, January, February, March. Wait a minute, that's what we're in right now. Okay, so they haven't even reported yet. But I saw this big candle. I was wondering what was going on here. Feb, so what's that? Oh, okay, it's because February 24th was that washout bottom. But why did Adobe go this day from 415 up to 480? So I was thinking that that might have been the earnings day, but it's March 22nd, not February. So um, that's a nice move to the upside. I don't know. I, I wonder what that was all about. But I don't really have anything to base DocuSign on. I would say that the implied volatility is probably too expensive to do anything. But if you are looking for a big move, you know, why not get back up to the 50 period in 120 tomorrow? But again, that's like a 25%, 30% move on DocuSign. So let's see what they have to say. I like it. I think it's been beat down a little bit too much. But you could see the past couple earnings issues here uh, that they had for DocuSign. So um, I would stay away. I don't have a good read. If there's another company similar to them, let me know in the chat. Tag me. I'll have a look at that chart and then maybe make a little bit of a better uh, educated guess. I'm going to give up on trying to pull up. For some reason, I can't get Fastly up. I just, that one stock doesn't want to go. But uh, someone just mes messaged on uh, in the chat here. Uh, in, uh, Indo broke 40 and you're short. I'm not really seeing a heck of a lot of movement in INDO. I know it's been it's been a wild ride. It's been a great trading vehicle. I mean, look at all the opportunities you have for monster moves. It had one at 7 a.m. and then it's been a fade ever since. I thought today it might get to that 50 level for a short. It clearly didn't go there. Uh, otherwise, it would have been worth a trade. But I'm not really seeing a heck of a lot that would make sense. Ooh, that chart just completely crashed on I me. Mean, I'll get that fixed in a second. But the 15 minute will have to do. Yeah, if you think about the 40 short here, I don't know where your cover is going to be. It, it, you know, if you're thinking about swinging something overnight, I never like these things for swings because your your risk, your overnight risk is just tremendous. Uh, so 40 short, not sure the out would be. Maybe if you're thinking about 42 and VWAP or something on a 15 minute. Um, I don't know how much follow through you're going to get with that move. Speaking of follow through, there was no follow through on Agri. I should have just waited for that five level. Uh, sorry, that, that $4 level, as I was able to get some out there at 30s, then popped up, tried to break 50 again, I reloaded the short, was able to get some out there for another scalp win, then just took it out. You know, I ended up getting stopped out on it. I just didn't want to give up the ghost. I mean, if it's not going to make a capitulation down to, to 280 to $3, and we're about 15 minutes from imbalances, then I should be waiting for the four level, which I like a heck of a lot better. I'll get my one minute chart back up in a quick second, maybe throw the shot. Okay, yeah, um, I was just looking here at uh, Q's, not really doing too much. I was thinking about dancing with the devil here um, into this, this number. And if you do get that break, like let's just say it's a big sell coming for the imbalances, watch out for this 33060. Uh, it's hovering there. It's tested it a couple times and wanted every single time. And by the way, it looks like uh, uh, Prad might be uh, liking his short as it's coming back in right now. Uh, to the close. Yes, sir. Uh, as we go, 33044 there. Um, Prad said Andre's three stacks. Prad four stacks uh, here. Hopefully he can uh, get going on that one to the downside. There he is, four. Yeah, throw them foes up. Uh, okay, uh, 33050, uh, a drop on the Qs. Uh, we still are short Rivian. That should come down in uh, again. But DraftKings, just to look back, 
This is exactly where we got out. It's right back into that level again. I'm waiting for a move down. Obviously, the MLB, so on and so forth, that it's in the stock now. Everybody knows about it, and it looks like it wants to go. So let's see if we can come back in. Oh, that's what I want to do. Um, SoFi, we are almost out. Money, 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 money. Uh, I think SoFi could be. I mean, it's not my most profitable stock, but it's up there. My most profitable stocks today, Mr. Softy off a $4 winner. Rivian just destroyed my number one stock today in holding. Next up, SoFi. Um, and again, this looks a lot different than the other ones. This is what you got to do when it's a $9 stock, man. You put on bigger shares and you just do this all the way, man. Look at the difference here. This is SoFi. And then you can see how we trade Rivian, right? A $40 name. To the downside, we hold, man. That's $2 there. And it went all the way in the money. $3 didn't even take it. Now we're holding this short down in, right? So completely different name, completely different style of trading. That's the one thing. Wow, okay. What is Roblox 52-week lows? It's right here. It's at the bottom. Uh, Roblox is at 39.50. Uh, 39.50 is the 52-week closing low. Um, so let's have a look at this. Roblox coming back in here. Um, we said we don't talk about Facebook or we don't talk about Bruno either, but Roblox right now. Looking at that bottom, I think this is a possible YOLO name as well. Roblox into this area, a couple upgrades, this thing rockets. But again, man, no profit, no fun for you uh, on these days. So Roblox continues uh, to get spanked around. But look at this. Look, you want to talk about barcoding? I really feel like nobody wants to put on any positions right now. And I mean, Fantastic. I guess I'm one of them because I'm just holding these three that I have. Like 4140 top, uh, 4090 bottom. I, I like Roblox. I believe in the company, but for right now, it's not really moving. My kid told me, he said, uh, he's only 10, and he said, Roblox yesterday, and how he knows this, and he relates it right back to the stock, he goes, yesterday, Roblox uh, initiated chat for accounts over 13 years, or maybe it was 18 years or something, and he asked me if he could switch the date on his account uh, so it looks like he's that old. No, you may not. Uh, and we answered that. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that's, yeah, the, I mean, that's the point is content, right? Like, yeah. I don't want this dude talking to 18-year-olds. Uh, he's 10. But, uh, okay, there it is, 4140 to the upside there for Roblox. I like the stock, but uh, it's not going to work until we get some more hawkish or dovish, I guess, talk from the Fed, which happens next week. I can now show this INDO miniature. What I, was, what I also wanted to get up for Indo, I, like, I know it broke 40 here, and maybe it was a short there before, but you can sort of see how there's just no volume on this. And I get it that it was moving, and it made a big move at the open, but you want to see some volume. At this time of day, with things chopping around, like you've seen, it was in and out of a firm, it was in and out of Apple, it was in and out of AGRI a couple of times, but you just... To me, if you're not sitting in something deep in the money, you're trying to find like clean trade, something that's moving, where you got some action that you can take advantage of. I know some people are looking at F cell today. Um, I got, I actually didn't quite make top wick, but it was pretty close. It's now come back to 695, those highs, but it's sort of a similar thing. Like, there's not a heck of a lot going on with this right now. Like, maybe you can get a bit of a scalp, but volume not picking up too much. I want something to dig into a little bit uh, that's going to go give you a little bit more of an opportunity to, to make a quick in and out trade where there's going to be some actual movement as opposed to, you know, just sort of jumping into something off of a level, but then it just barcodes on you for the next five or ten minutes going into these imbalances in about eight minutes or so where it's, it seems like right now there might be a bit of a nothing burger, at least the early indication is. Yeah, here, I came home last night here, and uh, so just because they're talking about my kids here, here, here's my dude right here, um, and he was talking about science projects. So uh, I came home, looked at, watched this magnesium catch fire. Uh, they had like a little stove here, and then they were dropping different things onto this said fire. He also made a lemon battery. Uh, apparently, so that was pretty cool. He was pretty hyped about that with the acidity. So what's up? Uh, and then, you know, my daughter's like, huh? Uh, thinking her hand's going to get blown off. But uh, there it is right there. Family obviously means everything uh, to me. So that's that. That's why I trade. And uh, shout out to everybody's family out there as well. Um, but okay, thanks for the credit, man. Nice trade on DraftKings. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it did start to make a little lower there. And it went to 50 and bounced. So we'll wait to see, man. The market is also bouncing. If DraftKings, like I said, if this market goes to the downside, which right now oil's down 2%, we'll see it's starting to make moves downside here, oil. Uh, but it just bounced off that 50. Let's see what happens. And that was 
uh, yesterday. That was after they returned home from their coding class in which they did 3D printing. So, like, this is why I have no money. I mean, honestly, the amount that I spend on these guys is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but what else do I make it for, right? So uh, that's that. And uh, DraftKings, let's see if we can make a little bit move down and I can pay for some of those classes. There you go. 3D printing, it's fascinating. It's fun. It's a lot. It's amazing. One of our former traders, actually, uh, uh, he has 3D printed and was making some stuff for us uh, before they opened their office. Uh, shout out to you if you're watching, Tom, at some point. But AGRI said, let it move. Wait for something that's going. It's pump pumping back up to $4. So don't get stubborn with it. It broke that 50 level. Going to get out. And now looking for it to get close to that 4 even. Uh, that's the level. You can see what happened the last time we got here. Just an absolute rug pull and shelf uh, got made. So I want to short it into that with about six minutes to go. There's enough time. It's doing good volume. That's one of the reasons why I feel comfortable trading it. And on top of that, HGRI is very unlikely. Go ahead and, well, it's not going to have an imbalance. We, very rarely do you see one of these low float names actually do anything based on the imbalances because there's not enough interest in the big firms to, ha to, to throw um, imbalance orders at the close on them. So it, it shouldn't be affected at 350. You can trade it pretty well into the close. Yeah, spend that money, uh, as everyone's saying now. Uh, okay, so, oh, just a quick update. So Facebook would love to still be in this. Uh, unfortunately, there, we got out of two-thirds. I mean, th this is what we do on the show. We talk about our trades and have no problem explaining where we get in or where we get out and why we did that. So, um, you know, we got out of Facebook right there for 50 cents and, like, like I said, one, two, three minutes. That was a thir two-thirds out right there. Um, and then we did hold that last third. And that, that's why I'm flat right now. Uh, as it broke back down below, and I thought it was going to take out the 50 period. So that's exactly flat. So in flat... Facebook is my fourth highest stock. I forgot to talk about that. The only we don't have anything negative uh, today. Nothing. Um, the, oh wow, well, my bad. We have AMD uh, early uh, with a hit. So in and out there on a mistake actually, and then in. Out a little bit and then out right there. So as you can see, it was a little bit of a profit uh, situation, but we pay fees. Other than that, man, everything to the positive side today. Facebook, bang. Microsoft, bang. Oxy. Look, I mean, look at this Oxy trade. Short Oxy, 59. Out 58, 60, half. The next half, see ya, 57, 39. Like, this is my trade on Oxy. And as you can see, nothing else on Oxy all day. One in, one out, bang that to the downside there. Um, Rivian, we still got it. I mean, obviously this is a winning trade. And then SoFi, yeah, let's go on SoFi. We're definitely flossing that off right now. As uh, here comes the market to the downside. Um, it's still showing one. Uh, Pratt just sent us the imbalance, still 3 million oh. buy sides. So. But by the way, a firm's still running by, I have no idea what's going on with this chart, but you can still see it's at 3660. I have this weird gap in my chart, but a firm's continuing to go here. It almost got positive um, a couple of seconds ago, but uh, has pulled back a little bit, but super strong. I'm glad we got out of that one. I'm not really sure what's going on. And I got asked in the chat, like, what was the, f I don't know, it was random. What was the first stock I traded and when? I actually did remember this. My first live trade as a day trader was on Oracle. Uh, I traded Oracle, and basically it was just, I, you know, I got in for like one cent uh, worth of a win. The first time executing uh, in the market. That was back in 03, and the stocks that I traded were Oracle, for the first little bit, Oracle, AMAT, uh, Cisco, and a little bit of Microsoft. So uh, not the four horsemen, but pretty close to it. This market, though, for Mr. Pratt over there uh, is going a little bit back into this downside, but... It's not. I don't think it's going up. The trend is still still coming back down, but it's not breaking out of the range. And I kind of feel like it won't do that until 350, uh, where it'll likely pick a direction for the last 10 minutes. I'm going to be watching Blink going into the close, uh, just because I feel like that's at a pretty good level. Uh, not that I think there's going to be an imbalance, but they have that report. They have the short interest. I'm curious if it's going to have a move at four. All right, so we're basically out of SoFi. I mean, I'm just going to wait for Rivian. I mean, the Rivian earnings are going to come after market. We have to be flat at four, but uh, I feel like there is a sell possibly, a possibly coming. I didn't even realize the time, how close we are. Let's get these imbalances ready to rock and roll. I know a lot of you are here uh, for that reason. And again, thank you, guys. Thank you for all the love. I mean, I, you know, I 
share with you my family. Uh, it's just, that is what it is, trying to build community here. So uh, thank you one more time for all that love. And I stick my neck out for you guys on the trade and obviously on the social side as well. Um, okay, and, and, and thank you to Mike Boston. Uh, those are very, very kind words. I don't, I don't, you know, whatever they were. Uh, when do my kids start trading? They've already both made trades. Um, okay, so right here, it, this is going to update um, come 350, right? So right now you have, these are all from 9, and then anything that's halted, I don't know what this is, uh, anything that's halted would have had a different time in here as well. MBT maybe, I don't know. Um, no, that's not MDT, MBT, okay. Um, and that's what we're looking at right here. So we're going to watch out for these uh, to update. So this is not live right now. You could see the time. It will, you know, update at 350, which is now two minutes away. DraftKings, let's go. DraftKings, that's a chicken dinner winner. And we put that on right in front of you guys, man. Uh, so there's the trade. Pretty simple to me. Uh, the out was going to be here at 8, 18. We've already taken that winner. So we've already got out of half just in case we get ripped up to the upside. Uh, and now we're holding for here. Let's go DraftKings, man. Put on right in front of you guys to the downside. Here we go, DraftKings. Hopefully that'll make a move here down if and when. Well, not when. We know when the imbalances are coming out. If it is to the sell side, then I think DraftKings collapses and we get that 20. I'm actually bidding 21s. I may change that. Let's change it to like 27s. What's the difference uh, at this point with DraftKings? We'll put that at 27 just because I don't need it bouncing off view out for some crazy reason. Uh, we'll put that at 27 and see if we can make 50 cents on that. I just saw someone say nice pop on DWAC. Yeah, I, that stock actually, um, I actually canceled the stop order on this and I forgot to mention that I had the stop order, but they had a quadruple bottom at 68. And I know it was already down an absolute ton going into it. But when I saw this level, I was like, oh, if we're going to head down further, uh, I was going to go short. Eventually, you give up on that move, and you saw the futures start to come back in. But DWAC has been getting uh, absolutely shellacked. In the context, it hasn't even broken the trend on the day, let alone the trend it's had the last couple of sessions. So I'm coming in tomorrow thinking, I mean, that 68 floor, the 15 minutes doesn't want to cooperate, uh, that 68 floor, quadruple bottom, if it gets broken, you are looking at about 60 to 63, your next level of support. Uh, that's where it makes it's made a ton of sense in the 50 range and the next level at 60 61 I even I heard trader Pratt say this too like the stock gets to 50 and that's where it makes more sense to buy that's pretty obvious on the daily chart look at this down move breaking the 50 period it's got to find a bottom it's been getting crushed ever since the rumor news whatever you want to call it uh, involving no, no, no. Uh, Mr. Trump uh, going away we're gonna go to Ms. V but after yeah, not, imbalances no. in no, about no, five no. seconds or so. yeah 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 the time is in this uh, chat uh, okay right here here we go uh, with only one second left here's the imbalances they came out here we go uh, let's see what happens Apple's a big buy so that's sorry about that Brad looks like the market may go to the upside here whenever you get Apple with a buy that tends to be what happens uh, we can we'll zoom in a little bit here so we can see we'll just cover this up and then we'll put it back uh, oops uh, there it is so let's here's Apple trying to move as well a little bit of a buy so that came out the imbalance here ripped up about 30 cents now let's see what happens maybe the futures do come back in right now uh, Pfizer Bank of America like I said Intel every day yesterday was a buy today is a sell uh, just keeps going around there's CVX uh, whoops is a name that See, sometimes it does. Like, I click on it, and then it just brings up the chart. Uh, there's CVX with a little bit of a buy as well uh, to the upside starting to go here. Uh, other than that, there ain't a heck of a lot uh, on here. That's Citigroup, CVX, uh, and then you can see the NASDAQ kind of dancing. So not much happening. It looks like DraftKings, the market not moving, so we're just going to have to exit some of these trades. Even Apple did not actually did not move on that imbalance. So it was just because it's a big imbalance doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere, but the market is coming back to that upside. Hope you got to stop there, Prad. But we're going to uh, Miss V, I believe. Sure. Hey guys, just nine minutes left until the end of this trading day, and when Tony the Tiger will be ringing the bell. So please make sure you don't leave without giving us a like, guys. I believe we need still eight more likes to 1K. So please, team, support and let's get even more than 1K likes. Back to you guys. All right, all right, there it is. Yeah, we're almost at that 1K. Thank you, Ms. V. Hit the like button if you can. And I did tease uh, Tony the Tiger shirt. So, but there's a better name. I, I forget who did it. Someone said Tony Toronto. That's, that's better. That is better. That's, that's classic. That it's better. Tony Toronto. So Tony Toronto is the new name. We're in uh, Toronto, by him. the way. And uh, 
Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, so just let people know that. Um, yeah, we are here. So uh, in lovely Toronto, Ontario, Canada, uh, now that the borders and I think some of the travel uh, bans, uh, I'm in Miami the next uh, two weeks from now. Um, you know, it should, that should be a great great vacay with the family. But uh, yeah, come visit us, man. We're going to have, you saw Raheem Alani in studio today. We had some of those viewers, uh, Mohammed and Isaac, come through awesome. two weeks ago or so. Uh, but you can only come through if you bring scotch now as they've Apparently. already sort of raised uh, the level. And we got some traders back on the floor. Yeah, there's four or five, four Brandon traders, Luka. I believe, that are back there right now. So, Tony Toronto, there we go. Uh, people liking that name, but it wasn't me. No, don't show him. The shirt, there it is. Too late. Okay. Yeah, you did. Okay. I saw it. Okay, okay. Uh, hopefully you didn't it. see it. And no rewinding if you did. Uh, you know, I, I, hope it, I hope it doesn't disappoint, but I really like that shirt uh, when I did see him earlier. So, um, all right, guys, that's that. Uh, we're getting ready to close out some of these trades. Oh, just so you know... Uh, unfortunately, Rivian did a move, so um, you know we took that out, and now we're basically flat on this trade. Rivian's one of my top stocks today, that's for sure. Um, CVX was trade of the day. We're going to have that afterwards. SoFi's going. DraftKings not doing anything uh, on this, so it looks like we'll just take w the wins that are here uh, and just get out now on DKG as the market starting to go back up. But hey, a good successful day. Every day that we're in the green is a good day. So today, another good one, guys. Uh, let's get ready to rock and roll. And yeah, you're right, I get excited, man. That's why we're here, so let's go. Yeah, and uh, never got to four on AGRI. It is starting to pull back already. So I, I feel like this stock, it's not done necessarily until it tests 280 to $3, um, but it did give up the ghost here. And it's, it's still a day one play or day, day one, day two play. Uh, first you had the energy, low float names, and then you had some of the materials, the metals. Now you've got some of the uh, agricultural uh, names start to make a bit of a run. So anytime it's day one, you can't just assume it's going to be no good the next day. Last time it did this, there were a couple of decent upward days and then it capitulated. So that's what I'm expecting, that there might be one last pop. I'm probably going to play fades because I don't think you can get as high as five again, but you never know. Uh, 280 to $3, that's your support level. Uh, Rivian is making a bit of a move, but it's too late now. Like We'll watch it at the close. Uh, too late to put a trade on as we're watching it. Agri now breaking 350, so it's falling even lower. Uh, might get to that uh, two, $3 level by the close. Yeah, so, uh, all right, so there we go. We'll take another piece out on SoFi. Uh, we got out of our DraftKings. Nothing I could do. It was 65. Uh, that started to go to the upside. Uh, we got out of our Rivian as well. Everything is all good, um, and there's not much left to do here. We can go back to the imbalances, as they do tend to change the market a little bit right now at 355, so we can find out what's happening. Watch Apple switch to maybe a sell here. Maybe the market comes back down. I don't know. We'll watch it. Uh, 355, they tend to move around, and right now here live in Toronto, Ontario, it is 350. 54.50 right now. So uh, a little bit of time to go. I miss uh, the lineup there on NBA Top Shot, so we missed that one. Um, and then we'll watch out here with only three seconds to go. Uh, let's see if there's any sort of a change. You'll see a little bit of a change here. Like there goes Apple disappearing. I don't see it. So uh, yeah, it looks like it must have got paired off. Starting to go. Like yeah, I said, cool. look at the market. Starting to come back down here a little bit on that 355 number. But uh, sort of a nothing burger. Uh, we will go over to Brendan here as we're getting ready to close the day. All right, let's make it official here, guys. We'll, uh, we've talked about many of these already, but uh, here we go. If you missed it or you're joining us late this afternoon, I don't know where you've been, but here comes what is on deck for earnings tonight and tomorrow morning. There you go. We've already mentioned, obviously, Rivian. Uh, Sean, you were talking about DocuSign. We didn't get to Long Jeveron. That was, I felt like it was on the watch list this morning. Is, uh, it had some early morning moves. I'm looking at Blanket as that $26 level on the, on the daily chart that looks pretty interesting. I keep forgetting to pull up WeWork. I suppose at some point I'll, I'll have a quick look at it. It's been a while since we traded or even uh, considered that stock. Uh, but I think Rivian, DocuSign, Blink because of the short interest. Those are, those are the ones that are going to matter. But let's keep in mind. Always go back to the well uh, until it runs dry. So there have been good trades in oil. I've had some success with Chevron trading it off for the oil futures. Want to make sure doing that. And then sort of sticking to the EV names that have been working. Uh, don't stray too far away. Just because there's excitement in one place, you don't have to stray away, stray away from the strategies that have worked best for you in the last uh, days and weeks. Yep. Um, invest in tobacco. MLB is back. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, do people still do that to spit, uh, to chew? 
Uh, I guess so. I guess there's some. There were guys in my league, my men's league, that would still. For me, that's pretty. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it, but there's still people that do it. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't invest in tobacco for that reason, and I don't own any tobacco stocks. So, Um, okay. Unfortunately, I own weed stocks, which, uh, yeah, those haven't been uh, going too great, have they? Uh, You might as well just, like I said, you might as well just light those things up uh, and smoke the certificates. That's the idea. Themselves. Uh, Okay, but uh, yeah, not much happening. I don't know if there's any names you guys want to look at. Uh, DraftKings, we did get out it came back down so we lost five cents on where we got out uh that's fine rivian into earnings same thing man uh we got out right here but still good trades for me uh out in the 30s that was a good out for us we didn't really need to reload that and i was just this was one of those names that we're just holding out to see if something uh big happened here but again with earnings coming there's not much on amd with a nice move back t still at that 52 week low neo oh man still down that 12 percent but uh brendan has something else uh, just a note on DWAC, guys, just seeing Trump's uh, Truth Social will be fully functional by March. Doesn't actually say an individual date within March, but it says March. So a uh, big spike there on volume through 70 for DWAC. So yeah. that's why I was heading back. It was getting destroyed. Touching so, 7150 maybe, not a bad long. Yeah, I mean, look, coming back, at least uh, this is a good trading vehicle. So we're excited if it's going to start moving because that means we can jump back towards it. I haven't traded in a couple of days and, uh, yeah, feeling lonely. I had a big move, but maybe it gets off that bottom before it gets to 50, uh, which does feel like the level to go to. Uh, I see what you said, Playmaker, but, you know, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> the YouTube algorithm is not going to let you put that one in the chat, but that is pretty funny. Uh, yeah, heck of a day, guys. I hope, um, I hope everyone had a good time today. Uh, it was a great, great trading day. You know, lots of stuff. Like I said, we're negative on one name, and it's AMD. Uh, positive on – so we go eight and one today uh, on our names. I can't, honestly. That was – for me, that's great. Uh, and we could have even done more damage here with Facebook. I mean, if I would have held this Facebook trade, that was an absolute monster here. Uh, taking that 50-period break, really didn't need to get out, uh, but we did get out to the upside there. We're getting ready, man. It's almost Tony time. So uh, with just under over a minute left to go, we're going to drop the bell. It's Tony Toronto. He's here. He's in the building. He's here every day. He's already dancing. Apparently he has some wild stories, all this stuff, man. I want him to get back on Prad's show in the midday. That would be hilarious. Uh, He had the best line I've heard for a long time. He went to the doctor and was diagnosed with paper hands or something. That was great. Um, That was fantastic. So thank you again for all the love uh, on the show. And we're about to give you a little bit of a treat here uh, with Tony Toronto. Yeah, that's what he does, man. He's already getting excited. He brings us the candy every single day. It is a pretty cool shirt. Um, yeah, it's the one I, I, I want it. Yeah, don't want to spoil it, but we do want to give him a little bit of t- extra time on camera to do the dance because, like I told you, he has the same happy dance as uh, one of the first traders that we had on our floor. It's basically the same thing, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, the market. You know, it's a great recovery, but I don't think it's going to get to the green. Um, but it was a good bounce uh, after we got that CPI. So not a bad day overall in the market. So we dropped the countdown on this almost at Wednesday, but it is Thursday. All right, let's go. Ten seconds left. There it is. Countdown. Where is he? On. Where is he? Where is he? Put him on. Oh, he yeah. He's got the pull. Oh, yeah. This is exactly what we're talking about with only three, two, two and, and one. Yeah, buddy. He's like in the club. we got to get him one of those... Um, Oh, the, the move is there. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Tony, for that. What, glow There's sticks? the Polaroid. I mean, it's the Polaroid. Take a picture. I wanted the Polaroid, the Kodak, the Polaroid. Thank you so much, Tony, for that. That was a hell of a lot of fun. So uh, that's Tony Toronto. He's killing it as per usual. Uh, no matter the temperature, dude is in short sleeves. How did we wind up today, Brendo? Uh, after what happened this morning. Could have been a lot worse, guys. Here we go. Uh, 0.4 for the S&P, 0.4 for the Dow. A full percent for the NASDAQ, but uh, yeah, we'll take it, I think, after. Uh, if you missed it this morning, the uh, CPI in line, uh, 2% down for crude oil. Uh, when we sat down this morning, it was up about 5%, if you remember. So, wild swings. I just, I love the chat right now. Uh, Chubby891, I can now die happy uh, <laughs> because of that. So much love for Tony on here. Tony Dance, they want him to wear sunglasses. Bring him to Vegas. They want everything. Uh, this guy is going nuts uh, in the background. So thank you so much uh, for all the Tony love. And we're glad we made a star out of this guy because, hey, man, <laughs> he made it himself. That's all. We just called him out. Thank you to Traitor Prad today. He had a couple cameos uh, on our show. I hope that short worked out for you. Did it? Yeah. yeah. 
Good. Well, that's all that matters. Yeah, a green trade is a green trade, and we'll take it. Thank you to Randy today. Thank you to Lucas over there. Thank you to Mark working hard uh, all the time. Still, still working. Still going nuts uh, every single day. Thank you to the traders behind us for the environment. Thank you to Greg as well for the support uh, if and when we get in trouble. Uh, and thank you to Miss V. There she is. There she is. Uh, yeah, thanks to Neil as well, obviously, with some great trades today, and Brennan with the news. Look, we're super happy to be here. Thank you for joining us on CPI Thursday. I mean, tomorrow should be another fun day. Oil's moving around. We got more earnings. We got Rivian coming out any minute now, and it just should be a good day, I think, uh, tomorrow for trades. So happy Thursday to everybody. Thanks for joining us. As I'm losing my voice as the show ends, that's always a good sign. We'll see you tomorrow at 8.30 sharp a.m. See you then. Bye, guys.